up to something. And we are going to be heavily distracted by many things. For one, we got some good old wrestling going on off camera, yep. which is always fun. We usually like to do that. Usually we got the football game on, but we got some nice little high spot indie wrestling, which is always fun to see. You might see one of us in these clips. Kind of like it's the only kind of know. <laughs> it's the only one that's new. <laughs> Psychology, never. But we are blessed with the, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, the... Best in-ring performer of this generation right here. We got the legend, the belt collector, man. Oh, come on. Former AEW world champion, current IWGP United States champion, former IWGP heavyweight champion, main eventer of the Tokyo Dome, Mr. Seven Star Match. Oh, I, 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 enough's enough. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> done here. We came to we came to an agreement. Uh, where we mentioned some of them, not all of them. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going deep. I'm going to go deep in the pocket. Uh, street Fighter. I'm just blushing. The street Fighter winner, defeater of Xavier Woods. Oh, yeah. on the tournament. Well, man. that's not really an accomplishment, but all right. Oh, former yeah. All Japan Junior Heavyweight <laughs> Champion. Keep it going. Keep it going. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll end it. Kenny Omega over here, everybody. Great man. to be here. Thanks for, for having me today on as a guest. It's been a long time coming. Jeez, we've, oh, we've had this in motion for four months or so. Four months. Yeah. Four yeah. months. Yeah. So we're playing catch up right now. Uh, I'm not sure if the interview now will be um, as interesting uh, as it would have been back then. But, hey, I'm going to try. Shoot. I, I, to me, it's even more interesting because so much has developed since then. A lot since, of stuff has happened. Yeah. Since, like, trios, tag. They throw roller coaster rides. Roller coaster rides. You're coming from yeah. Japan. Like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I was yeah. able to get back to so, Japan. Up for, yeah. So we got this. I think that's even better because we got so much more in the tank to cover. But, man, it's been a it's a blessing being able to just, like, share a locker room with you. And now to share the mic with you is awesome. Wow, fun. Yeah. And we got Rich Lotta over here, special guest co-host of the evening. Yes, sir. What's Nobody on, watches y'all? more New Japan or Japanese wrestling, period, <laughs> that I know wow. than this man right here. So yeah. he's going to throw some names at you. Oh. This is go, he's going to dig into some things. He's That's actually deep cut stuff. We, uh, we are thankful for you, sir. I mean, I remember, geez, back before streaming services and things were just, they, they weren't even around us. It was really few and far between where you could have someone to talk to about Japanese wrestling. Oh, that's true. It's cool nowadays where because of streaming services, YouTube, all that stuff, there's a lot of people that know what happens out in Japan, what happens out east and in other countries. So it's really cool to actually sort of be able to talk about the things that I grew up loving. So that's that's wonderful. It's awesome to have you. Those guys are names now. Like yeah, they become names before they even get over here. Yep, they now because of those same things. Yeah, so you, that's don't a need that, you don't need that fresh new introduction. People already know who they are. There's like a buzz there, which is yeah. cool. It was yeah. a, it was a real cool like meeting of like a certain generation of guys along with the technology that really like synced it up to where I started watching like around Russell Kingdom Nine. So it just was a couple clicks. Yeah, and you know back in the older days, you would have to you know go through all types of CD forums and mm-hmm. also yep. um, you know different tape trading and stuff like that. And I'm I'm just fortunate. You know, to have like come along now, it's it's all out there for us. That's, the, that's one of the most major benefits to this generation, man, with the technology and all that stuff. So a lot of people like to shit on it a little bit. No, I think there's a blessing for the fact that people can get seen so much, like mm-hmm. from further away, and it's not so much hard, like you know, like a tape shipped off to this and this, like you know, like all that kind of stuff. Is I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I will say as a performer too, um, yeah, a performer that isn't getting much younger at all <laughs> it's it's great that people are familiar already with the work that you put in um somewhere else uh rather than kind of starting somewhere new and it's, it's like a fresh restart from zero where it's like i have to prove myself I have to show everyone exactly what i can do if i don't impress people i might not have a job here um people that might not care about me or hate me or whatever so it's really nice now to sort of have the work that you put in before actually come into play when you go to a new area or a new promotion or a new country um everyone's sort of familiar with everything that everyone does and i think it's a great thing i think it's beautiful man yeah i can't go any further without bringing my, my brother i had to do two whole podcasts by myself my brother was not here with me i had to do this i i had who do we have uh, angelo parker and matt menard daddy magic here last time i was by myself you left me alone with those two <laughs> insane individuals that was crazy and then i had to go on the jericho cruising Go solo with an auditorium full of people. And I'm just bringing out guests left and right. But it's cool to have my 
partner in crime right here, Montezzi. He's back, man. He got the little blonde tips. It's looking beautiful. He's gorgeous. He's a very handsome young man. Moisturized. Moisturized. Yeah, conditioned. Not dry. <laughs> Not dry. Yep. Yeah. So we are, We he's back. You got anything to update us with? Man, I feel good to be back. First of all, everybody, uh, thank you guys for all the support. You know, I'll get into that another time, but thank you guys. I'm happy to be back, and I will tell you this. I will never get over not being on that cruise that time. I will, no. I will get over it. I will not No, he will get not. Over it. Nothing, nobody can tell me. My grandma's like, oh, it's all right, baby. I want it. No. I just, no. Well, I, the fact that I, I could have been there, and I was not. Striving. <laughs> Me and my bro was texting. I was, I was not in great spirits, and he uh, he kept me he kept me on up and up. He performed live. He did his show set. He killed the podcast, and we are our brother's keeper. So if I'm not there, he got it. If he can't make it, I got it. Rich got it. Cy got it. We X got it. We gonna make Shout it. Shout Mike to go out there and to move to Tennessee. Shout out to you, brother. Yeah. Congratulations on the job at AEW. And I'm glad to be back, man. I'm feeling good. I'm refreshed. I'm reloaded. Hey. So we are going to get it started, man. Uh, man, Kenny, yeah. we're going to start not all the way back there because that can take a long time. We're going to start. Yeah, for a while, yeah. We're going to be here for a minute. But I'm going to talk about the transition of moving over to the States. Oh. And, um, yeah. yes, coming from, you know, that transition of, like, leaving – New Japan mm-hmm. to start up something like an all elite wrestling. Yeah. And a lot of the fears, there was a lot of doubts. There was, was like, cause was. you know, once again at the time, like actually through the beginning of time of pro wrestling, seeing wrestling promotions come and go, come and go hearing rumors about this is happening. And so now all elite wrestling was in that rumor mill of these other new promotions that are about to come all the risk. Yeah. All the, like the, a lot of the fans is not, not knowing how big this could be, or if there's a real possibility of making this thing happen, man. Talk about that whole transition. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of fear and a lot of doubts, and I was at a point where my contract was coming up with New Japan, and, um, you know, they they really did feel like a, a home to me, and, and Japan as a country felt like a home to me. So to decide that this is where I was going to commit for the next foreseeable future without knowing if we were going to become a thing, whether we were going to get a TV deal, whether even we were going to have a ring, I mean, there's a point where we didn't have a ring, but we were going to be a promotion. We were already booking <laughs> buildings. And we're like, geez, like, I mean, that, that, that's kind of an, it's an easy part of the puzzle to fill because you, know, you could buy rings anywhere. But yeah. we wanted to have a professional looking ring. We wanted to have a good setup and all those things. We wanted to look like professionals. And I guess the mission statement was just to create an alternative. And I, I some people will say competition. I, I'll definitely say alternative because I do think there's a place for everyone's wrestling tastes. And I'm glad that we can facilitate um certain type of wrestling or a certain type of show that people enjoy watching or just like to add what we do to to their lineup of, of professional wrestling they consume on a weekly basis yeah, yeah yeah so um for us to start a promotion for us to just give a place for just incredible talent that wouldn't otherwise have a chance to show themselves on tv and to showcase what they do and perform their art in front of more people than they maybe would have had a chance to otherwise that's that's the real Plus for me, the real big bonus, the real like payoff. Um, being on TV, of course, is cool. Um, trying to succeed in America is cool. I really thought I was going to end my career in Japan, so it was, it was a very new, neat chapter for me to start. Yeah, was there but, a lot of fears and doubts with that? Just because that you put so much like you put so much of your body and your stock and your career on Japan. Yeah, and having to and choosing to leave that. You know, for like creating something that you, once again you don't even know. Yeah, you don't even know if it's going to like be a thing. You know? Yeah, you like, don't even know. Yeah, I was thinking like, man, maybe I'm just like flushing all down the toilet for like just an unknown. Yeah, a pipe and dream. It, yeah, <clears throat> but you know, as as we talked more and more, and things kind of came more serious, and and things started to materialize right in front of our very eyes. And when I went to that one um, <clears throat> press conference where I that's I'd signed just right before I went out to talk to the microphone. I was like, yeah, this really seems like it's going to be a thing. You know, we had, it was albeit a short crew, but we had a short crew, but we had reliable names. We had, um, you know, myself, Bucks, Jericho. We knew Mox was coming down. Uh, Cody was there. Um, Lucha Brothers, just create, you know, we had talent from all around. And, of course, yeah, I was working hard to sign some of the Joshi. I was working hard to, uh, we had, uh, at the time, uh, Strong Hearts, so like Seema, uh, T-Hawk, 
uh, Lindemann, like gr just great guys. I wish we could have him back, by the way, but great guys. Um, so we had a very um, international roster of great people that were ready, I think, to, to take the next step and to be on TV and, and to show what made them special. So I don't know, being in that press conference and, and seeing things kind of come together and seeing sort of just feeling the organic excitement for the people that were there, I sort of felt like, okay, this is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the thing is, though, you, you could have a crowd of like, a thousand people or whatever it was at that press conference, you have to hit like, you have to hit around, you know, at the time they were asking for five, 600,000 a week. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, uh, yeah you, you know, you get, we're all, you know, in some, some way we've, we've been in front of live audiences, right? right, right, right like right. imagine being in front of 500,000 people live. It's a lot of people. It's like a sea of humanity. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you need to attract at least that many people to make sure you preserve that TV spot. So that was like, maybe my only fear is like, that, Do that yeah. many people know us or care about us or will they care about us? Um, so luckily for us, like, I guess we, we pretty much doubled the expectations. So we yeah. kind of float around like 900, 1 million. Um, but it's just the goal, I guess, now is just never to feel satisfied with that. You know, yeah. there's, I think there's still more people that can appreciate, you know, what we do as performers and as athletes, as professionals. Um, there's There's got to be more than a million people out there that would, that would like what we do. I think more so like the what you I think what at that time which y'all were fighting more so than anything was the fact that the inexperience of yep. doing it. Yep. And I feel like that was the biggest criticism from all walks of pro wrestling. It was media life. It's just the fact that there was inexperience. Yep. From everybody like even Tony Khan. Absolutely. Oh, for oh, sure. Which he took a lot of the blunt of that. Uh huh. You know. And still having to work through those things and still having to like still push forward and block out a lot of those doubts and y'all just do y'all thing mm -hmm. rather than trying to create what's something that's already been done. We know it works. Y'all all like y'all have another product. Y'all know it works. That's that's not going anywhere. Yeah, we're not trying to take them out and you're not trying to push them away. But you're creating something that's different with a lot of people and different minds that are just different and unique right. and alternatives. And, and, you know, another, another challenge, like you said, and it kind of, kind of, uh, leans into what you're saying in the beginning was like, all right, we can go to new Japan. We can go to DDT or all Japan, wherever, yeah. or, or, you know, rev pro. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to make this killer match with, with uh, swerve. And they're going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go like 15, 20, whatever. We end up going 24 and we kill it. That doesn't work on TV. No, you know what I mean? Nope. It'd be like, okay, you're going to go 14 minutes and 15 seconds, and then we're out there, and when we're about the 11-minute mark, be like, no, nah, actually, you guys got 12. Mm -hmm. And you still have to come out of that as best as you can, making the match look good, making yourself look good, making your yep. opponent look good. Yep. And there's no ands, ifs, or buts. There's no excuses. So when people have these, like, who's the best wrestler in the world, you know, conversations, like, it's got to be a guy that can do all that stuff. Everything. Yeah. it's yep. uh, And if you haven't, if you haven't done well in TV... Um, but you've done well on a place where there's no limitations. That's great. You know, you're, I'm sure you're fantastic. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why it's like, who, who is the best? Like, I don't, I don't know. You have to, when you factor in everything, um, it all comes down to opinion. Of course, it's hard to really nail down via fact, like who is the best, you know, who's the best doing all that stuff. I don't know. It's, it's so it's, difficult. It's so difficult. It is. It is it, it, like, uh, cause that's where the criteria is always changed. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Who can do, who can do the most with no limitations? Who can do the exactly. most with the little limitations? Yep. Who can do the least bit, but get the most out of it. Yeah. The biggest stage. Okay. Who can do it in front of 200 people yep. and get the same thing? Like it, it, it fluctuates so much. Um, that there's a big argument too, where it's like, who can do, who can make the most amount of, most amount of money by doing the least. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So there's, so there's that too. It's, it's all yep. that. That's all the thing. Like, it's like, it's like, if you go, if you talk about sports or you talk about music or something, everything is always broken into different categories, yep. especially when you yep. debate different things. And, and like he's saying with wrestling, you see that everything kind of gets subpar together, depending on what the argument is. But then you talk to the professionals and that's when these conversations come in. They really yeah, matter. Like, like, we don't really give a shit. Yeah. Like, it's like, no. it's, you know, and it's funny because you, you see that, you see that that parallel as you talk to people in the game is like that. But I got to ask you this too: yeah, when you first get the initial idea, and mm -hmm. he brought and he brings up the press conference, and you're like, "Okay, you got you know it's yourself, Cody to time, all, you know guys on the on the team, Young Buck, Sammy from the initial press conference." Yep. But when you get the first phone call, and you guys obviously had to meet with Tony Khan and hear the idea, hear the vision. What's your What's your ideas? You guys are like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about, or was it a pipe dream? How'd you feel at the time first talking to Tony about the vision of AEW? 
So uh, the Young Bucks had said, hey, we got this guy, and he seems pretty serious and pretty keen about starting up his own promotion. And I said, wow. Every about every year or two, I hear this story. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I said. Like yeah. again and again. Yeah. And so it's like, but hey, it's like if you guys believe in him, you know, you're some of my best friends in in the world, not just in wrestling, but in the world. So I'm gonna trust you, and I'm gonna give this guy a listen. So he said, "Yeah, let's have like a conference call, or whatever." Let's just. So I, I remember I went to the rooms at the Tokyo, Tokyo Dome Hotel, and they kind of sat on the end table, and he was just talking, and I could definitely get a grasp that. He was a historian. He knew mm-hmm. facts about everything, especially like, you know, in, years 19, in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. He, he knows all that. Attendance figures, um, like all, all that sort of things that, that I wouldn't even care about. You know, I mean, it's, it's like that's the super ultra fan type stuff. Um, but it's, it's interesting data to know because he was able to, um, you know, predict the wrestling forecast and all, and all those sorts of things and, and why it is actually realistic that we could pull it off. Mm. And um, I remember him saying, and he seemed uh, very committed, that I'm going to start a promotion, whether I can get a TV deal or not, I'm going to find a way to have a product be seen, whether it be I buy my own streaming service or what. But I'm going to do this. And for me, um, it was kind of like that timing or never. Like, there was never going to be a time when, you know, Jericho was going to be available, JR was going to be available, Mox, um, myself, the Bucks, Cody. It's like we, uh, Hangman, you know what I mean? Like, people you could actually build a foundation or promotion around. If it wasn't then, it was kind of never. So I thought, I don't know if I want to challenge American wrestling right now because I was so happy and content in, in Japan. But I was also worried about my longevity there because I sort of developed a style to, to my own fault that was very, like, physically demanding. Yeah, and correct. it came to a point where I was like, if I don't give people that, then people are just going to think I'm a shell of what I used to be or that I'm, maybe I'm, I'm phoning it in. And I, w- I was kind of scared about how long is my career going to last if I, if I don't do this now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I also did want to have a chance to not, I don't want to say press the reset button, but to have a chance to give a new version of myself that people could also identify with. Right. So if I went back to Japan, I could take that old, you know, Kenny Omega cleaner, uh, best belt machine character, but then there'd also be that AEW American side of Kenny that I could sp- splice that with, kind of mix it in. Exactly. And now I've got like, you know, someone who could actually maybe wrestle five, four, five, maybe 10 years longer than what I could have. Right. Yeah, so it was about, you know, testing myself, trying a new locale. Um, I guess even diversifying as a performer too. Um, that yep. was important to me as well. Because I mean, it, it's, whether I believe it or not, that's not even important. But people did believe that I was one of the best doing it. And I didn't feel that I deserved to be called that if I couldn't succeed in America or if I couldn't yeah, succeed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If yes. I couldn't succeed doing a television style, I just feel like, there are other people that are so good at doing that. You, you know, I mean, you got your Randy Orton's, you got your John Cena's, you got, you know, for even twenty even, years. Yeah, exactly. They've been doing yeah. it for twenty years. Even even Jericho, like he knows exactly. Yeah. Um, it was. We never really talk about it, and and I don't know if this is too inside baseball, but I remember there was a year, uh, one of the shows in, in year one, at AEW where we didn't have the match. We didn't even have it. We were, but we were the main event, and we had to go out there. It was me and Hanger against uh, Jericho and Sammy, and just. Knowing that I was in the ring with Jericho and knowing that we didn't have anything, I was like, I should be nervous. I should be scared. But at this point, I should trust myself. And if I can't trust myself, I sure as hell better trust Jericho because he deserves that trust and respect. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I'm going to be confident in this, and we hit our time perfectly. So it's like um, if you don't have that experience, you're going to get awkward dead air or you're going to get – the show going completely dark and you haven't finished yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, and then like, where are the best, best wrestler of the year, the, the best wrestler ever conversations start there. They, they end there yeah. actually. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So it's, uh, it, and it's, it's wild to think that because it could like the catalog can be just like crazy, insane yep. like from everything, like all the 30, 45 minutes of uh, one hour draws, yep. all that stuff. It kind of like, now there's an asterisk next to it just off of that one yep. one thing, and that's the pressure you put on yourself being so high up there. 
and putting the, those kind of ca- kind yeah. of caliber, but also b- taking that risk too. That's also a double edged like, sword too. It's, it's like it's crazy. It's like the what have you done for me lately business. You it's, know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. insane, and it's and it kind of moves faster nowadays. Yeah, it's what it does. It yeah. moves so much faster. And it comes get, back to that technology that I was talking about. Like yeah. everybody can consume it. You can learn it. Yeah. Like, like whether it's fans or wrestlers, like you, you kind of brought it up. I wanted to ask about like you know you just came from the Tokyo Dome. Yeah. Like you know a couple weeks. Or, more than a couple weeks yeah. ago now. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the greatest matches of all time with, with Will. Shout out to Will. Um, what do you make of the perception of, like, the, the New Japan Kenny versus the AEW Kenny that, uh, you know, people, people may put out there, whether, you know, is it just the camera work? You know, is, is it the... Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Or is it I don't like... see what you're digging at. You know, okay. It, it's like the whole thing, like, you know... If we're going to really dig deep into that hole... Yeah. Like, uh, what, do, what do you make of that perception that's out there? So... Um, I, I feel like for that particular style, and I, I don't know how far we should go back. I'm, you know, we'll, we'll go this right back. Show, bro. We'll go right. We'll go oh, right back. Is. But uh, but uh, but I'll I'll, get to, I'll do the Cole's notes version because I don't want to like blab on and on and on. So I remember, um, you know, when when Shinsuke left, when uh, AJ left, and the uh, the Good Brothers left. Suddenly, there's this huge gap. There's this huge hole, and Gato didn't know what to do. Our Booker didn't know what to do. And he was kind of like, okay, Kenny, um, I guess it's gonna be you. You're sticking around. I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. And they said, well, we're thinking maybe um, maybe you move up to like the Intercontinental Division. And I was thinking like, wow, this is incredible. Like this is, I have been wanting to do the New Japan heavyweight main event style since I've been here. And as fun as it was to kind of finally find my stride in the junior division, it was like, it was also exciting because it's like, no, this is what I feel like I'm geared towards. This is what I actually understand. And this is how I can put my best foot forward. So I remember when I went out and um, we did the match and I ended up pinning uh, Shinsuke in the match, who was the Intercontinental Champion at the time. And we sort of did like the belt appeal, like, hey, I want your belt, buddy. <laughs> and the fans, I remember hearing it. The fans were, it was a mixture of the fans being kind of silent and I heard the fans kind of chuckle. And I'm thinking like, oh mm. man. But I th- that was the best thing I could have heard because I thought like, geez, you guys really don't know. Like you... Like, I, I love that they felt that way because they didn't know me from anything that I'd done in DDT or really all Japan. Like, I said, maybe they kind of knew. I'm sure they kind of knew. Some of them kind of right. knew. Right. But here I am going from something that I kind of was new at, which is this New Japan Junior style, and now I'm finally going to do the style that I'm most comfortable with, um, and no one believed in me. So I was like, I can't even lose now. It's like, you're already, there's no expectation. Yeah. So <laughs> any good thing that I do, oh boy, you guys are going to be shocked. This is great. <laughs> and, um, you know, we had a great uh, intercontinental title run. Uh, the G1 that year was was I, some of my best work, I feel, um, in, it, because it came from a place of just sheer motivation. Yeah. And, um, but yeah. Uh, so it was kind of like the, it was kind of like the chains were off. Like, um, I remember, I specifically remember a match you had against Nakajima in um, that year's G1, and it was like, all right, man. Um, and That's uh, a hilarious story. It's funny, I, I, had, I was so dead tired that day. <laughs> and I said, like, guys, like, and, and of course, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was kind of like a main roster guy, but at the same time, I was still viewed as the DDT guy. Mm-hmm. So Ibushi and I were still sort of traveling together alone um but he wasn't in that block so he had no reason to be there um so i remember like being in the on the bullet train to get to the the venue and again i was just zombified so i woke up and i was like whoa where am i on the on the bullet train and i look i was three hours ahead like of where i needed to be so i had to double back another three hours we showed up and i had to like piece this thing together so fast but it was so fun. It was a, I, I was really proud of that match. It was a fun one. Yeah, man. I love those. Like, um, that, like, that's when you really, tra- when you challenge yourself, that's when it kind of mm. becomes fun. When you really have to like stack things against yeah. you. Like, Oh, yeah. it's a little late. Okay. And I remember always saying too, I said like, man, are you kidding? I only have like half hour to put this thing together or like 45 minutes or an hour or even less. And I just, I think back to this stuff here, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> like this we always we did this every time we at PWG, did this. every time, we always. Did and we didn't even shit. we had yeah we would have like a hallways worth of space to work with too. Like yeah. this is what we do. I'm like, I was like, yeah. just calm down, like don't panic, just like think straight, and you'll get it. Yeah, it's yeah. like we we know how to ride a bike. Yeah, ride your bike, ride your bike, whether it's in front of like five thousand people, yeah, Tokyo Dome, or with this P 
PWG freaking Rosita. Yeah. Like, you know, you like, ride your bike, you know? And that's, like I said, well, you need that little challenge to be like, all right, I need to come back to, like, my roots. Absolutely, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. You need to go back to that a little bit. Like Speaking and, of, like, challenges, like, um, like the 2010s New Japan are along – for a lot of my friends, it's kind of like it's our versions of of '90s All Japan, right? Like, yeah. Like, like, what was that? It was a bit like, of a boom that time, yeah. Yeah. Like, what was that? Especially like you know how yeah, well that was my starting. I was, I was right. starting in the states then. Especially with how well like Bushi Road kind of exploded. Yep. In, in that time, like, what was it like being in that competitive environment with your? Because it's not exactly like we can. Um, have we have DVDs or interviews with Okada or Tanahashi or Naito? I like, think that's the that's actually kind of a cool thing to me because yeah. that's what keeps that their mystique is so high because of that you don't hear much from right. them so when you do hear like, like these press conferences you kind of like tune in and zone in a little bit more to what they're saying right. yep if they do release any kind of outs yeah you answer, try to right. re- you try to read the body language you yeah. try to read like the inflection of their words like yeah. what could it be that they're feeling and then you kind of get an idea of it because of just the the universal um body language of it all and that's so, right amazing yeah. you guys can do that that's amazing. Dude, it's it's like, the art, man. It's like, like what art. was it like being in that competitive env- environment, just like pushing yourself as a performer, like and knowing like yeah. th- those guys, like either I have to follow these guys or they have to follow me. And these, this is like the twenty-seven Yankees of guys of this era that that you're dealing yeah. with, like Tomohiro Ishii, who's like, like he just he just goes out there and he's he's just incredible. We, yep. We've seen him come to AEW incredible. and he's just he just runs in like like how did how do you like like um. I'm struggling for the words here, but um, like your competitive uh, drive in that, yeah. like how does that, how did you operate in that? So boy, it was like you said, it was, it was super competitive back in those days. Cause you had the homegrown talent there. That was incredible. So you had guys like Ishii, you had guys like Nakamura, uh, Tanahashi who was still very healthy at the time. Okada, who they were really building as the next big thing. Naito was on a huge kick at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, then you had uh, Fergal. Um, yep. Yep. Finn Balor uh, for the guys that, you know, only know him from from there, uh, who was just, people probably don't remember, they just don't know, but he was insanely popular as a junior back then. Yes. They loved him. They absolutely the, loved him. the most popular juniors. Yes, I, absolutely, Ever. absolutely. And then on top of that, when you have these best of super juniors, which were would be probably more or less my only chance to really shine and get work there, they would have guys um, like Alex Shelley come in, Davey Richards come oh, in. Oh, God, yes. Um, then you'd have the Michigan Group Pro guys like Hayato Fujita and, and guys that are just, they bring it on a different kind of level. Yeah. And it's like, what are the fans going to gravitate towards? What is going to stick out in their minds? And I was thinking just like, whatever I do, I have to, for one, no one respect my place in the card. Um, luckily, I was given the opportunity to be in most of the semis and the mains, uh, whether it be because of my All Japan run or just because maybe you know the DDT thing. I don't know. But um, I was in that position where I was like, okay, I can cut loose a little bit. That's great. So it's always like, find that one thing, you know, maybe I can't kick like Hayato, maybe I can't kick like Ibushi, maybe I can't do high flying like, you know, Jack Evans or Ibushi, or, um, you know, maybe I know I don't have, um, you know, I'm not built the way that like Davey is or something like that, you know what I mean? But I would have to find something original and unique that would stand out amongst everybody else and just give it my all because I really felt, at least at that time, um, my conditioning was, and my, um, just my dynamic movement was probably one of the things that stood out the most for me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, Make it look like I'm working hard. I make it look like I'm going to work hard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> going to work hard and just be real dynamic, be real active with the selling. Yeah. Um, and just show people something that maybe they haven't seen. And if maybe when they review that show in the back of their mind, something that I did will stick out, hopefully. And um, but at the same time, you know, I'm not going to do that at the at the. I don't want to. Uh, do that at the risk of cutting the legs out from somebody else. Right. I don't want to do that at the risk of making whoever's supposed to win or be in the top four of this tournament look any less, like, less of a competitor. I really wanted to contribute as, like, you know, a soldier for New Japan, you know, in the best way that I could. Uh, so with with your career and even going back from, from New Japan, All Japan, and to yeah. now, and you guys, I have to give both of you guys credit here, too, as I always tell him, is that you guys have always been great at tweaking things within your character, things that, you know, even when you go to a new match or something, either either the gear change or a new look or something with a new song or even the, the outfit you wear, things like yeah, that. Yeah. And that takes a lot of sitting back and a lot of, like we call it, a sniper mentality, a lot of thinking 
A lot of sitting back on, okay, I'm going to change this. I'm going to switch this. Oh, I'm going to tweak this. How, what what has been the key to your longevity? Uh, some of it's just been serendipitous luck. It's like, what what aren't... What, Sometimes it's just yeah, that simple. It yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. Yo, it's like, yeah, yeah. you just think, like, what are, what are people getting? What are people getting a lot yep. of? What are possibly people getting sick of? Yes, sir. And then uh-huh. what, you know, and then it's like, what what from that can you make new or can you make different that people will go, oh, this is a breath, breath of fresh air. Or like, well, this is the shot in the arm that we needed. And it could be, it doesn't have to be something serious. It could be something funny. It could be something heart-wrenching. You know, sometimes when I feel like, I might have a feeling where it's like, man, I feel like maybe the crowd wants to cry, you know? Mm. And sometimes I'll feel like, especially during the G1, uh, which are the, these crazy matches where everyone's going for match of the night, oh. match of the year. I'm thinking like sometimes like, wow, I think sometimes people just want to laugh. So any chance I would get, you know, I would have those, you know, bangers of matches or whatever, or try to. And then, you know, when I would see a guy like Tony Diano, who's, you know, got a pretty crazy character. I was like, man, I'm going to, go like above and beyond and make this the most craziest match, you know, craziest comedy match that you ever did see that you, that you typically would not see in New Japan. Tamatonga, you ruined that last one uh, in 2018. I'll never forgive you. <laughs> what happened with that one? That one. Um, did you have like a ladder match or that, something? That, he, he ran in while, while you and Yano were. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I got beat up. I got beat like, up real like, bad. Oh, though. yeah, that did happen. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, right with you. Uh-huh. Match number 15,073. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, yeah. No, I, I remember now. I got beat up by, by Tama Tonga and, and T. I took their finishing move. That's yeah. right. I remember. I remember. Ruined your points. Yeah, yeah. That would have been a good one. Sons of bitches. You know, not everybody can do like, like, <laughs> like, like, like do serious, like do serious things, do tongue in cheek, do comedy. Like it takes a lot of risk and just being comfortable in yourself to do that. But that's yeah, knowing yourself, does, though. That's knowing yourself. But that's right. knowing yourself. Yeah. Right. Like, um, there's certain, like, um, certain gimmicks can, like, kind of go far left when the time is right. Some, some of them, you got to kind of save those. Like, 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 um, Undertaker American Badass can kind of veer over to a little comedy thing. Totally. But, yeah, but it, but it, it, you got to save those moments. Yeah, and you got to like space them out. Yeah, well, people don't want to see the dead man doing really crazy comedy. You stuff. don't you don't want yeah, a two guy guy yeah. like weekly. But then you have a Kurt Angle who can just flip, switch, switch, yep. switch, switch on the same show throughout the night. Yeah, and then like and he, it, it just works. Eddie Guerrero can switch, 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 hit all these different notes. Agreed. That's what makes those guys like so much like like one once once in a lifetime type of performers because they can pull it off. Even Triple H noticed that. And as he got older, he found a way to just switch, switch and go with like Sean and do all these other things. Like Jericho pulled it off amazingly yep. throughout his whole career. He did. And just like surveying like, ah, they don't need serious Jericho right now. Right now I need to do some funny stuff with Christian and like, you know, some little goofiness. Now like coming back, oh, I need to now it's time to put the suit on, cut the hair. Now I can be serious because he's that's surveying the landscape and understanding the audience, the timing for it. Serendipitous luck, as many some yep. would say. Um, so it's it's a it's a it's just a natural flow of things. You got to kind of be open, vulnerable, and kind of like really um, honest with your with who you are. Yeah, and and there there has to be you almost have to be unafraid to fail. Yes, Unaf- yes, like Same. a lot of bravery with that. Comedy yeah. is a really brave. Absolutely. You got to be very brave with that. And the crazy thing about comedy is that even if it's the right time for comedy, what people don't realize is is doing. Comedy and professional wrestling, I don't want to say correctly, um, successfully might be a better word. For sure, for sure. It takes a lot of timing, precision. The The way that you build the joke to the punchlines, the various punchlines, yeah. the layers you add to it, if they aren't the way that they should be, it's going, it is going to fail. Yeah. It's just like, well, I'm going to get a football to the, to the nards because it's, it's funny. Uh, if you place that poorly, it's not gonna. It's just gonna come off in poor taste. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, you have it's to like, build. Why, to why it. are we doing dick jokes? Like, exactly. Exactly. Like, yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah. Or if I just like, did a promo, just farted for no reason, it'd just be like, like what? what? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no source material to any of exactly, this. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. But there's a way to build yeah. to these punchlines, which make you you look like a dope, or make the guy that you're working with look like a dope. You know. And if you guys are committed to it together, you yes. can build to it, and then it's like that's the other thing too. Is like you can't half-ass these things. You got to go no. like straight in head first. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is again, that's that's why uh, a guy like Jericho, who when he does things like that, he is completely committed. He he goes, you know, when he does the, um, you know, the the Broadway musical approach with with MGF, you know, it wasn't like, hey, we're gonna kind of like sort of hum a tune. 
Like, no, they did an actual dancing bit. You know, they yeah. had backup dancers. They had the, the proper choreography, all that stuff. And if he didn't go about it that way, you know, New York Times probably wouldn't have covered the story. Exactly. So it's 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 knowing knowing when you feel something and then just committing to it and also not giving up on it if if people aren't with it immediately. If you mm. still sort of have that we feeling. We talk about this all the yeah. time, man. Mm-hmm. About like not like like uh no, put the put, put your put, put pedal to the metal. Like, yep. get, lean in on it. Like, you know what I mean? Even like, for, to speak of like our guys, like you know, Claim wasn't wasn't like an instant I hit. See, yeah, they weren't yeah. an instant hit. But now look at them now; they're the most popular act we've got going in AEW, yes. probably. You, like, and that was like years of not letting off the gas. Mm-hmm. Just like, no, we're gonna stay on it and we're gonna stay committed. Yep. You're gonna like, um, I think that's like a issue with like entertainment. Period across the board, like we don't lean into it enough. Like sometimes, like uh, uh we, they get a little shaky and oh, not yeah. getting the responses and the numbers we want, so we let off. It's kind of like yeah, it's like, we'll tell our story, but like let's look at the woke check bo- check boxes. Oh. You know what I mean? Like I want to get x amount of points before I'm done. Right. And yeah. it's like man, just tell your story. You tell know what it. I mean? Just tell the story. Tell you look at some of the things that that people love and and are doing well in TV, like The Last of Us. It's Amazing. like, it's just a one-to-one conversion from the video game. That's it. Yeah. That's all they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's but it. Then, but then they'll deviate with like the, the episode three that everybody loves so much. Oh, but like, man. But they leaned into yeah. it and they said, yeah, we're going to do this. And yes. We're going to like deviate from the game. Yep. But they're not going to, they weren't scared. It didn't they, look cheap. It didn't no. come across cheesy. I, no, I thought that was acting was incredibly superb. touching. Yep. Yes. It's a very human story. And, and they weren't and even going homosexual with it. It's like, no, we're going to go in. We're going to show people. Yeah. Like hu- two humans needing connection. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I, I mean, did not. Yeah. I didn't. The, the best part about that episode was like I didn't look at that as oh here they are trying to just tell they're a gay story to tell a gay story. Yep. No, I said like they're telling a wonderful love story. Yes, and about how companionship in the in an, a, just a dark time means the world to people. It gives people a reason to live. Mm-hmm. Gives people a reason to continue and and to and to just keep with the struggle and never give up and all that sort of thing. And the fact that you know. It was another, you know, a man and man relationship. Who cares? You know, what I mean, that's just it's, that's it's the human beauty of love. Human you know connection. What I mean? Yeah, and that, and to, if anything, that episode plays into the definition of the title, "The Last of Us." Right. That's like that's the perfect description of it. Somebody yep. we're looking to connect. Yeah. Like in a world that everybody's trying to kill each other, rob, running from this, running from that, take from you, leave people again, people and, know, and knowing what, yeah, and and knowing when to take the chance on it too. Ooh, you yeah. know, when everything seems that's, so bleak. Yeah, you know? usually that's something you would like save to like episode seven or eight, like, right? Hit pretty early. Yep. Yeah, like a lot of your um greatest like kind of stories, I would say, like have been examples of like the ups and downs of like positive male relationships, like whether it's you know the long story with Hangman and the Elite, whether it's Kota Ibushi, like yep. what made you like kind of explore that realm because your predecessors weren't doing that. Like uh, you, yeah. know, you can go back a generation. They they were standing like here saying, "I'm gonna get you" or yeah. anything like that. Like <laughs> I'm yeah. better than you. No, yeah. you're better than me. Yeah. No, you're not. We're gonna settle this in a yeah. fight. Right. <laughs> like what made you like kind of explore that? So I sort of felt that we were we were entering an age where it was a lot of, especially in New Japan too. It was like, okay, let's do this epic encounter, which is anywhere from a half hour long to forty five minutes. Yay! Someone wins. Someone loses. Someone comes out. Goes you. I want the belt, and it's coming to me, and that was, and that was, and that was it. And that was it. So it was like, brother, cool. It works because people are going to look forward to this next incredible matchup. Mm-hmm. That you know they they're, will they're tell that, and they will tell that story in the ring once the bell rings throughout that matchup. And then when the bell rings again, there's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser, um, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that form of storytelling, and that's how you know the territories did it um, at times, and and but at other times there were different types of storytelling and methods of storytelling. And especially when we watch, you know, TV dramas, when we watch anime, when we watch movies, when we watch even video games now, which are incredible uh, form of, of storytelling. There are different ways to get the people um, engaged into what you do. And I thought, man, like I have all of these things that are personal to me and stories that I might not ever get to tell if I never write a book or never have a documentary or whatever. And they are sort of, storybookish and we can book them in a storybook kind of way but they're all real and i thought like if i can tap into that um especially since i felt that a lot of my 2016 g1 run was it was coming out of a place of desperation where it's like i was desperate to show something and i was willing to sacrifice everything to show a piece of me 
and to show that, you know, I belonged in the spot that they had given me, even though the people before me, there was like a lineup of five guys for sure that, that were all lined up before me. Um, and I wanted to show that I, that I belonged there. And I felt that that was able to unlock an element of me and able to show raw emotion and desire and a passion in my matches that I wouldn't have been able to show otherwise if it was just like, okay, what, what's next? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Okay, I took a big move. I'll just do like, you know, casual sell number A. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. It was more than that. Um, so when I was sort of had a, a like a, a level of trust with, with New Japan and I felt like, hey, maybe <laughs> I can start introducing different ways of telling stories. And what about this? And, you know, th- it would kind of be like a bit, of, a bit of a powwow, like let's talk about it. And then near the end of things, I had such a great trust relationship with, with not only Gato, but the people that I was working with where I was like, I was able to to have an open forum to talk about these unique ideas that weren't really typical to New Japan storytelling. Right. And then when I would come to AEW, which of course was a different kind of, of storytelling again, mm-hmm. um, that, you know, that's mostly manned by Tony. Um, when I would have something very personal, like again, the Hangman story, which goes back years and years and years, you know, of course there is the possibility that well, people don't, know you for years and years and years they know what they've seen from aw yeah and it's like well we have the opportunity to share that with people we we can we can create video packages we have a good relationship with new japan we have a good relationship with roh at the time we can tell this story we can use bte we can use tv um and for me now i think the greatest challenge isn't like digging into my memory banks and like working with people that I have this history with, it's how do you make a story that that is piggybacking off of years of history when people might not care about that history and they only want to care about what they're seeing now or throughout your tenure of AEW. And you so, gotta add new people in. Yep. yep. So you have to you have to create this multifaceted story where if you've been following since the beginning, oh boy, this is fulfilling. If you've only been following since the beginning, it's like, you know what, this is still interesting. That's the tricky part. But that's right. that's the beauty of what we like. That's cinema. Like, yeah, they don't. Yep. Like not like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy didn't start where Rocket right had origin and where he yeah. was made and like. Um, or if you tracks. watch Terminator Two, like if you watch Terminator Two, without watch Terminator One. You don't miss nothing. Yep. You, but like you, you might not. The only thing you might not get is like, oh damn, like Arnold was a bad guy the first time. Yeah, you, you know didn't. I mean, that's that. it. Yeah. 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 But like um. That, that, that's the beauty of what we do is like, we've been doing that since the dawn of time. Yep. Of like starting like, okay, we don't have the, we can't show you the history. We can, but if you follow our story right now, we will trinkle little bits of history yep. as we go. So that can, makes you continue to want to watch it. To, so you get those little tidbits of history as you move forward. And I think some of the most fulfill, uh, like fulfilling parts for me is like, people that may have only known me from AEW and they go like, you know what? That's fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've heard that this story spans beyond what, what you guys are telling on TV. So I actually went back and watched the other stuff too. To me, that's like the hugest compliment. It's yes. like, like you like what we're doing so much that you're actually going to like dig back into the record books and, yeah. and see like where this actually started from. And you have, you even have, um, you know, these incredibly committed fans that would be like, okay, we know you guys don't get it. So, I actually made a highlight video explaining it. And yeah. It's like this, what incredible dedication. It's so cool. There's so many layers. Like th- that's the beauty thing. That, like I said, we go back to like talking about the streaming services and stuff to be able to put that stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Like now you have that. And I think, I think like um, that's the best, that's the best part is when fans can interact in so many different unique ways yep. rather than just like turn on the show and watch it or like go to the show and watch it. And then like it ends there. No, this, you can, that's, takes with you as you go and you share it with friends and you share it with people. And that's how you create the next generation of wrestling fans. Yep. That's how we do it now. Like we don't do it. was just like, Hey, take your like daughter and your little brother to like, no, (laughs) you like sit around and you like do these things and then you like share it. And then it spreads like wildfire, man. That's how we do it nowadays. That's how we got to create this kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that there, there's probably a, a big group of people that just want guys to walk out to the ring lock up and have a very classical looking wrestling match. No doubt. I'm sure they're there. There's, they're probably there in, in the thousands, Mm -hmm. probably maybe, but I think more so. And you know, this is whatever talking about our competition or whatever, but I mean, like you can even just 
take it from the bloodline feud. It's like people want to see these stories. They they want it. Yeah. Sure, they might want to see the payoff in a wrestling match, but they definitely want to see these stories that go into it. Yep. Um. So I, they're at the point their story can just pay off in a segment. It doesn't have to be a match because they they're just telling right. stories. Yep. Usually, but what we do is <coughs> pro wrestling, but. A lot of these aren't even pro wrestling stories anymore. No. It's not like, I've got to beat you. Like, so and so got to do it. Like, no, this is just personal people. Yep, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> this is people I got. Like, no, I got to get you back. And I feel too, like, with, with uh, how much how much the curtain has been pulled back yeah. on professional wrestling. And people think they have this understanding of what we do. <sighs> Whether they do or they don't. Chant, I, I don't think they do a lot of times. They, majority of times they don't. Nine times out of ten. But they think that they do. Yeah. And they also think that they're entitled to know. So it's like at that point, it's you. I I can look at that as a positive thing, where it's like, okay, you want to know what happens because you want to know us as people. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. want to know the real side. Yeah. Well, how about we give you some of the real side in our storytelling? Now you're gonna get to know. Now you think you know all about what we do as wrestlers and performers, and now you're getting to see us apply our craft to what's happening in our real life too. Yeah. So people really think that they're interacting and they're getting like the real human side of, of what it is that we do. And they kind of are, but I still think that they're probably way off as to what actually happens behind closed doors. You know what I mean? It, if we're being honest, and it, I don't mean that in a negative way, I just think there's, no, definitely the, not. I think you just have to be there <laughs> no, to know. You really yeah. do. But even still, like even the people that do know that have done it, that have yeah. been doing it for generations, yep. you don't know in 2022. No, you don't. You absolutely don't. You and don't know in 2021 and 2023. Are, you do not. We are seeing a ton of examples of that lately. Uh, oh, daily. Both running riffs. <laughs> do you stop? Stop the cap. Do you, stop it. Do you feel that with, you know, especially on the, let's talk about on the other side. Yeah. Do you feel, other side. Other side. Oh, no, I'll play the streaming platforms. <laughs> um, so, if like on the other side, you know, back in the, back in the days, entertainers had a little bit more of a mystique to them. Yeah. Uh, before the social media times and things of that nature. And do you feel that sometimes wrestlers give a little bit too much? Yes. To the people. They do. As in, you know, for what they you know, what their brand is, what they're building, sometimes interact, give the fans a little bit too much when you could just pull back and kind of, yeah. you know, not so much interact and not yeah, so, like, you know. Uh, like fans, I'm sorry, I don't want I don't want y'all to know what I'm eating for breakfast. I don't want you right. to know those little things. I want you know, there's certain things that should be personable. Are they, are you yeah. know what I mean? I'm a I'm a very private person and I think at this point people people know that Kenny Omega is Tyson Smith. So what? That's no big deal. But I've always needed to have that separation, you know, and, and, and and even though, and even though I do have that separation and I prefer that separation, if you did know what I do, it's not that exciting. I just hang out with my cat and play games. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm not going to document that every day on social media for you guys. It's just, just know that that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? It's pretty, (laughs) pretty pretty simple. Paint the picture. There is. Joe Budden had a line uh, a long time ago on a rap song. He said, you know, music, you get the person, but not the, you get the music, but not the person that made it. And Mm -hmm. I understand what he's saying. Yes, you behind the curtain, you get a a piece of me, a part of me, but that other side of me, you don't, nah, we're not, we're not getting there because I noticed that in entertainment now where everybody just giving so much of themselves. And I'm like, I kind of like when Michael Jackson dropped the album and then just dipped off. I didn't, (laughs) I didn't hear from him for two, three years. Neverland for like three years. Yeah. You know, (laughs) people would drop albums and then they would disappear. People would have great wrestling matches and then you'd wait till next week and, you know, you'd wait to see what the story was. Exactly. As, yeah. Know. Yep. Yeah. Now yeah. it's like, hey, we we had this we had this great story which led to more questions than answer, and the wrestler will go on social media and say like, oh, by the way, this is exactly what I meant by this. Ah, oh, yeah. And it's like, or it's like, Let hey, or, or it's like, hey, what did you think of our performance? What that we cooperated to to do? It's like, uh. no, it's like you had them, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Like, you know, or, no, much of no, that. no, this is my favorite. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. I'm okay. Yeah, no. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There, there was a, I think, I think it was Kyle O'Reilly. Um, they did a thing in NXT where he like was like carried out by the ambulance. Oh and yeah. They yeah. fooled everyone, made, made him think every, he was injured. Yeah. I remember. And, I remember. And the, I was they there. immediately came on social media. I was like, no, no, just oh, let them, let them, you know, string them along a little yeah. bit. Yeah, golly, man. Wasn't it, wasn't it like an old story where like, was it Vince that was blown up in a car? And it's like, no, guys, okay, Vince McMahon's not actually dead. <laughs> yes. He was not in the car. <laughs> no, you I'm like, it's like, disclaimer. it's like everyone knew that he wasn't blown up. But like, just let them like live in that world for like a second. You just know? a week. We got, we got like four God, days. He you heard. Kind of had to come out and, and unfortunately, <laughs> Yo, he, yeah. he got blown up on, he was still alive. Yeah. He got blown up on Thursday and then Monday heard, no chance yeah, like, yeah. 
<laughs> it was, uh, was it was it like Braun Strowman that got crushed in a garbage like yeah. a, in like a garbage truck? But then he was like there next week or whatever. Paul Bearer yeah. like cement truck like we yeah, all, all that stuff. Like, oh, all man. That stuff. I I'm not I'm still a, a I'm like, still I'm still su- a sucker for like a big machine type structure coming in yeah to like do something in a wrestling ring I'm always gonna lose my mind for those guys of, of course of course <laughs> and then like, those old like Warner Brothers moments where like you know guys get blown up but then it's just like they got the soot covered and it's like a you know and then it's like oh they just wash themselves off and they're back to normal that's how it is it's cartoons that's like uh, man i don't want to know how wiley coyote got back after falling off the cliff like exactly no, let's, exactly let's just go yeah. next it's like let's go to, what was the next acme thing he's going to order and mess up and blow up man um so being in the role of a uh, executive vice president at all elite now what are the things that you once you get you talked about um tony khan brought all these things up in the yeah. little conference Saying like, oh, they, these are things I never even thought about. What are some things that you didn't think you needed and learn? Oh, but geez. now you like, now you're, it's like, now you, you kind of hone in on those things now in this position. Mm. In this How's stage. it evolved? Like, yeah. Over time. Yeah. So. That's a year four. We, yeah. You used yeah. to be four EVPs. Now there are three. Yeah, I know. There's only three. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I will say uh, the fourth EVP. We can't mention his name. I'm just kidding. It's Cody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Cody. So, like, uh, I, I just talked to Cody, man. He's yeah. Good. It's like, it's like he, he really, and I, I will assume that this is just from just knowledge of being in the business all his life. I mean, he was, he was born into the business and he understood a lot from his father. It's like, he, he knew what we needed. He knew what, what, what we need to line up and the things that I couldn't get. So it's like, okay, I, I've got good contacts for, any unsigned Japanese talent that you guys need, I can be that guy. And the Bucks will be like, okay, we know some great guys from like SoCal. We know some great indie guys that we can get. And Cody's like, okay, cool. Well, how about this guy, this guy, this guy? And we would have like, the, you know, the list of talent or whatever, and we would put them together. But then Cody's like, okay, what are we going to do about uh, medical staffing? And it's like, oh, that's right. We need that too. Yeah, we should have doctors. So he's like, okay, I've got a contact for Doc Sampson. And I was like, okay, that's probably not going to be enough. So like I had a, a dude down here, um, uh, named, you know, Bryce. Bryce yeah, yeah. yeah. So Bryce and I thought like, Hey man, like, look, I know that you've taken care of some of our guys and that you, you really love wrestling in the business. You know, would you be able to maybe take a full-time opportunity to doing that? So like we were able to get trainers through that and it's like, okay, what else do we need? It's like, Oh boy, we need like producers for TV. We need guys that actually have experience doing wrestling production on TV. So again, that was like a, that was like a Cody thing where it's like, okay, yep. I know like I can get in touch with uh, this guy, this guy, this guy. And then the Bucks maybe knew, knew a guy and then I would got, had to know a guy, but it was like, at the beginning, just to build that small little bit of infrastructure, which we didn't have, um, when you start checking off names off the box, like, okay, we got this, 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 this. It's like, you think you're there, but you're you're not because we were so yeah. understaffed in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, boy. And even to this day, like, I could probably confidently say, like, hell, we could use an extra trainer or two. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the tables are always busy. You know, we could use an extra trainer or two. We could have, you know, a couple other gophers or whatever in case that – yeah, you know, we're running low on certain materials and things. Yeah. Like there are there are Is there any emails we can submit resumes to anybody that's watching that might be interested? There you go. You know? Yep. Yeah. You got experience. Wanna join them. the AW staffing medical hanging and up. And our from family. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. We'll, like, put, a, uh, we'll put a link at the bottom. <laughs> it's like as as things, <laughs> as things grow, you just you just naturally yeah. will require more people to keep yeah. the ship running. Yeah, to keep it afloat. It's it's it's, it's, called, it's almost like um, managing like a team in a Madden NFL football. It's like yep. it's like oh yeah, like we can get that player, we can get that receiver, we can get that like yeah. But okay, we need a like who's going to be like transporting this? Who who's handling popcorn? Who's selling yeah. the merchandise? Who's uh, yep. like you, like there's so many different departments and levels. It's like you need somebody that kind of like hey, we're we're missing here. We need this kind of things here, and us wrestlers we always with a talent now it's like you're on the other side of it now yeah and it's like a little bit different where you look at the business a little differently too how fulfilling is that that role for you at this point um the most fulfilling part i, I maybe i touched on it a little bit but it's like in your travels um you know when i was doing what i did with with new japan and i was able to get some extra work um on the side, like, you know, one in between tours where I could go to like a, a rev pro or I could go to even my home Indian in Winnipeg or PWG or a place like that. It was seeing the incredible talent that just wasn't able to get an opportunity. Um, and whether that be because 
you know, place and time, because it's, it's always place and time. Um, it was being able to give those guys a look and give them a look um, with the, not the promise, but the possibility that they might be on TV. And now that we have an alternative to, you know, the, the, the big guy, WWE, it's like we have a lot of very talented wrestlers that deserve to do this for a living and are doing it for a living. And I'm, I'm glad that people that, you know, have a passion for what we do and are completely committed to what we do and feel like this is my plan A and there's no plan B. Well, we can take you out of the, the kind of plan C that you put yourself in, you know, working wherever you're, mm. you know, a job that you didn't enjoy or a job that you didn't find fulfilling. And now you're doing what you always wanted to do and you're able to put food on the table for your family. That's the absolute most fulfilling part for me. Um, nothing else comes close at all. I like, I'm not, a, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to the plan A's and B's of like, let, let starve a little bit. Oh, I'm not, sure. I'm not opposed to that. Like, I want you to like feel that little bit of struggle. I'm not Agreed. saying like do it for 13 years of struggling. Need, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, so but like, give me, a, you need a good five. That's the double edged sword. That's double edged sword. Yeah. It's like, sometimes we run into these guys who are just so talented. And we're like, okay, yeah, here's a salary. Deal. Yeah. I'm and like, it's like, whoa. I was like, whoa. And I, I'm thinking <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> I'm like, wait, so you've been in the year, you've been in the biz for two years. Like I can, I finally am starting to make money. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And it's like, this is after the 18 year mark. You know what I mean? 18 yeah. years. It didn't make a penny. Like it was like, I was, I was making enough to be able to like buy supplements and video games while living in my parents' basement. You know, right, that's right. it. I couldn't think about moving out or mortgage I, and shit. Like yeah. That. I, yeah. Like I that definitely couldn't think about making a family or anything like right, that. You know right. what I mean? I couldn't, I could, those thoughts couldn't even enter my mind. Like it was, I was too honed in on just whatever hand I was dealt with in professional wrestling. Like this is, this is everything. And like, sure. When a plan B came along, I was working at Costco or whatever. And that was great. That was fun. And I could take my indie bookings whenever they fit in. Mm -hmm. But Everything got put aside for that lifestyle of being a wrestler. So you do get it where you guys get too much too soon and they don't mm -hmm. know how to handle it or they feel really entitled without having that, that right to be entitled, you know? Yeah. Or, so you got to be careful, yeah. Or they've been in it for a long period of time and because they feel like they didn't get their moment or it took for long to get it, they get bitter. So it's either... It's either side. You can I'm like, you're not even 30. Like, those guys who feel like, <laughs> right, oh, man, yeah. you know, <laughs> I did this and I did that. And then it's like, yo, fam, like, you've been doing this for like five years, bro. Like, yeah. a lot of us got to come out here and, and sell, you know, like you do music, I sell CDs at the back of the car in order to, oh, yeah. you know, in order to make it happen. So, you know, you think about it and you look at the, the adverse effect. You ask yourself, okay, do, maybe I need to struggle a little bit and not take this opportunity right now, bet on myself, do different things and learn learn more so i know how to move in a room full of vultures as they say i right. feel like the most humble people that i've been around the most fun people that i have where we're, it's, where we're all working towards a very common goal of just having a great performance that benefits everyone yep those are the people that like you said were selling albums out of the back of their car and it wasn't it was like with the hopes of maybe one day i won't be but they were very much content with maybe it's always going to be this way you know what I mean? Those yeah. are the types of people I want to work yeah. with. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They yes. they've settled in the fact that like, you know what? This is that that's to me that's passion. Yep. Like yep. no matter if this is it, I'm still enjoying what I'm doing. Exactly. I'm still yep. I wanted it always. This is still where I feel like I I belong. Yeah. 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 Like you still want more and maybe more will come one day. And that's yeah. what you're always gonna push for. Of course, of course. But if this was it, like, you know, I'm satisfied, I'm happy. I'm happy with these things. Yep. But man, like that's also like you kind of want to tell people to like, the, especially young people like with getting an offer. It's kind of hard to like tell them no, but you want to still tell them like not right now. Yep. You kind of want to tell them that because you also don't want to be the person that's just like okay, you got it, you got your one two months of like okay, you got you got put on, boom boom boom, you're yep. hot 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 hot. Then there's like th two three months of like cold. Yep. And now you're walking around like you don't know how to settle into like. What's next? What's next? What's next? Yeah. Oh, um, no, we, we put you on. We, we've exposed, we put you out there. Now people know you, but now it's not your time. Yeah. And now it's like settling and just meddling for a while. And that's where the psychological shit comes. Uh, in. Even if you're like relate that to music, it's like, okay, man, we, we heard your album. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, what's your next single? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you have it what's, yet? It's like, well, no, I thought you'd still want to use my old album. It's like, <laughs> no, man. Oh, it's like no. we need your new what's stuff next? now. Oh, no, where's exactly. your feature? Where's your feature? Yeah, exactly. Who, 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 yeah. You hopping on with that, you know? Like, and like, if you don't have it at where's that your tour point, dates? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. That's how yeah. it goes. And so, and, and if you're too young and no, and you haven't been put on game on that yet, 
it can mess with you psychologically. Absolutely. So, like, uh, this is a personal thing as a as a, a actual like, professional wrestler, AEW contracted. Like, I'm always in the mental. I'm always thinking mental. I'm always thinking my body, my physicality. Yep. Like, um, a lot of 2021, you missed a major part of that year because of dealing with physical, like all the uh, five star matches, all the New Japan, all the battles with Okada, Naito, like um, everybody, like you know, added up all the TV, stuff, all of the it, pandemic ad- stuff, the pandemic, yeah, pandemic too, too, yeah, yeah. Add all those things adding up. That's once once again messing with your mental. Like, what were you going through mentally getting out of that space, or like still like like getting your surgeries and then s- still thinking like, can you still do? What you do? Can you still yeah. be who you are? And the company's kind of changing in front of your eyes yeah. at that time, yeah. as and, well. you're, and you're not a part yep. of it on screen. You're a part yes. of it, yeah. But like, like what? What kind of like the mental like gymnastics is going on in your brain watching yeah. that kind of stuff, man? I would it's say the, easy. The difficult part, and I think I, I feel like a lot of performers, especially athletes, will, will feel like, um, if I do all these surgeries, if I have to take all this time away, mm-hmm. hopefully it's going to be for the better, and hopefully I can recover to the best of my ability. And then I come back 100%. I wasn't as naive. I kind of thought, like, I need to introduce a new layer and be, like, a different version of myself when I come back. And um, um, that's when I'd heard about the the trios, tag belts. Mm-hmm. And I thought, like, okay, this is a chance for for us to work in a division that could look very visibly different from all the other divisions. I don't want... I don't want it to look like just like a tag match with a third guy. Um, and I don't want the elite to just be like the same old elite. So, um, you know, things really worked out and we were able to get uh, the song by Kansas, which is like, I just feel like we, we came back with a whole new vibe. And then, um, you know, the, the Tokyo Dome thing just kind of falling into my lap too, where I was like, oh boy, this is going to be, I was scared about that because I, I yeah, knew that, yeah, you I was know. Yeah, about that. But. Like the prep for that. Prep for that, yeah. Yeah. You got to do yelling bro at you the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah. It's, you had a you had a guy in Will Ospreay who was being heralded as, as one of the best in ring guys in, in the world. In my opinion, he's. And yeah. he's, he's, in, he is incredible. He's, um he's a machine. You know, he's, he can do, he can do it all. He's, he's strong. He's fast. He's agile. Um, but is he smart? Well. <laughs> he's he's uh he's smart enough to get by in his tools. You know what I mean? This is true. Yeah, and and I feel and like you and Don kind of took advantage of him a little bit, right? I mean, but, but that's the, the thing that whole thing you know that Don yeah. kept, kept referencing. And the, and the thing is too, like I would say, I would say Will's intellect is is um, and I love Will, but at times I th- I really think that it's helped him more than it's been a detriment to him. He there are thoughts that don't even cross his mind and because they don't cross his mind, he's able to commit wholeheartedly into something so crazy. Yeah. It could end his own career. Yeah. Whereas now that I'm too old and I've seen so many terrible things in my life, I, the hamster wheel is always turning and it's like, like I get gun shy sometimes. And before it was like, okay, I get gun shy when I think about it in the preparation phase or in training. And now sometimes it's like, Oh boy, I'm in the thick of it. I'm actually in this match and I know I've got to do this thing or might do this thing and I'm getting scared and I need to get that like out of me. You know, mm, and that's that's okay. sort of like one of the cruxes of, of getting older, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's getting older, wiser, but at the same time you kinda of get a little soft a little bit. You, you, know? you get cautious. A little bit. Yeah. I think do, I feel like cautious do. is the good, good word. Yeah. Because like those thoughts that you didn't think about, now you kinda of do. A yeah. little bit they're coming a little more forefront. So I don't want to say it's an intelligence issue with Will. It's just that he just he he's still in that phase of his life where he feels invincible, and we've all been there. I'm yeah. sure you've been there. I'm, I've been there. Moving off instinct. Yep, exactly. That's it. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think he's one of the most instinctual performers, especially for the age that he's at. Yep, and he's been like, able to hone those instincts into into elevating his performances. The one one main point I wanted to bring up too, because this is something that is very very rare, and me and Swerve we have long two-hour phone conversations about this because this is how we build as brothers. But you notice, and obviously you've been in the entertainment game, Rich, sorry, guys been in the entertainment game, that seeing loyalty with each other in this respective kind of game is very rare. And it's very yeah. rare to find a band of brothers because eventually you get a bunch of lions in the room and 
there's going to start flying. Everybody wants to be the top line, and everybody wants to be the top guy, and everybody wants to do this and that. But you, the Bucks, you know, other members of your team, you guys stick together. And you guys. It's also that power struggle, too. Yeah, it becomes a power struggle. You know, the one guy walks in the room. Uh, you know, they want attention like the other guy gets. You guys stick together. And you guys, are, you know, from the YouTube channel, all the stuff you guys done all over the years, you guys stick together. Tell me what keeps that bond of brotherhood together no matter what. When you know there's a lot of things that can tear you guys apart. Yeah, there's, that's very true. I think, yeah. I think for us, too, we, we're so comfortable in our own skin and where we're at in wrestling. Bro. <laughs> 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 I think he says this like every time, every episode. Oh my lord! He said, "Ooh, that hurt. That hit oh, me." Oh, that's the lottery ticket, there, man. Oh, yeah. Say it one more time. Like, you're comfortable with yourself. Lord yeah. Have mercy. And <laughs> I, I just feel like whatever I'm required to do, and even if it's not be the focus or the star of the show, I feel that I have something I can give that can allow that myself wherever that is on the card so right now like look we're just having fun six-man tags that's it i'm not supposed to be in this epic storyline encounter no blood feuds right now i'm just i'm in a position right now where it's hey we're doing the six-man tags they're supposed to be fun it's supposed to look much different than everything else and it's kind of like sort of like hey everyone just kind of kind of let loose enjoy what they're seeing and party down it definitely brings a different energy to the show you know like yeah it, it shifts the energy and like you know this is, which is good yeah, so it's like, okay, so it's like, that is that my role right now? Am I going to feel like, oh, darn, like, I really want MJF's role. Like, I want to be the guy telling those stories. I want to be I want to be on the microphone more. I want to, you know, uh, I want to bleed. I want to make people bleed. I want people to to cheer me, to, to, to boo me. I want I want a belt to be on the line or, or whatever. Like, it's not about that. It's like, okay, what needs to be on the show? What's different from everything else in the show? Do I have the skill set to to do the best that I can possible in that in that role? And a lot of times, because I've I've gone through the steps to prepare for it, doing fun six man tags, yeah, I can act absolutely do that. You can trust me in that role, and you can trust me with anybody, whether it be guys that are used to doing six man tags, whether they're, um, you know, a little uh, greener on the scene, or mm -hmm. whether it's uh, like a, a fun gimmick match or or whatever, or a, a best of seven series, which was a huge challenge, you know. Of course, um, but like <laughs> I I just knew, hey. I trust myself, and in the, the moments where that trust may waver in myself, I had two guys that trusted their themselves and trust me maybe more than I trust myself. So we can pick each other up when we're feeling down, kind of. Thing. Yeah, that's beautiful. Like I, I when once those first started announced when those um ser the best of seven series was announced, I was like, how do you, how are they going to pull this off? Yeah, how are they going to pull this off? Like because. You you guys already raised the bar so much in the industry of wrestling right now, and it's like now you're raising another like on the six on the six man series, the trio series. In America is largely unprecedented. Like ROH it's, had yeah. six man belts, but like yeah. this isn't like a traditional is, thing for no, America. No, no, this is like you, you don't. Once again, this is new to a, it's very different and unique to the American audience. They're, like in Mexico, you see like trios. Absolutely, you know, yeah, that's a big thing. But like American audience, I'm like. How are they going to pull this off? And as like a uh, like as a professional and as a fan, I'm curious. Yep. And I I miss being curious to something. And I think y'all brought something like once again, it's a different like it's a different like uh, tone you're tapping into and pushing on the show that necessarily hasn't been done. But I'm like I'm still curious, and this once again that's Kenny a different layer of Kenny that you're peeling off the onion. You know what I mean? With the band of brothers, of course. With the Bucks, and like to me, like one thing I want to see, like us try to t like us as, as a as a whole company, as a show, as a product, I would like to see us tap into romance. That is really Agreed. that is really tough to pull off, especially for our, our audience base that's used to seeing the action that they get every yep. week. We see those things, but I'm like, y'all haven't seen romance yet. And I think like even on, and, like, and romance that you want to cheer for, I think is the, the yes. You want to see yeah. that that the fireworks kiss at the end of the yep. teen, the teen movie. I think that's something we can we have the. It's not like we don't have the freaking tools to, to pull it off. We don't. We have we absolutely to, do. We have absolutely the talent do. for it. It's just like it's finding the timing, the placement, the yep. movements, the characters, like, yep. the characters, the emotion. Which emotion are we pulling? Who's the, you know? I think we that's our next task, and I would I would challenge. Our AEW management to try to 
tap into something that's just like uh, that's very left field for our audience. Yeah, you know? I challenge it. I'll take on the challenge if I, I don't give a damn. I, I you know me, like, but I, I challenge our um our staff and to try to pull something out of like another uh, motion. And once again, that's something you can't let off the gas with. You have to boom pedal yeah. to the metal and commit. Don't let people like, oh, this is cheesy. This is corny. This is corny. You don't know what you want. That's why you're here. <laughs> I I, th- I think I think the, the the funny thing about romance too is like, especially in wrestling. Um, I find it's easy to boo romance in wrestling. And I think oh, that's yeah. why Sammy and Ty, yeah. you know, got the reactions that they got, which that's not know, romance. That's lust. Right. I was saying maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe that wasn't ever necessarily meant to be like a feel good story. I don't know, <laughs> but like it could have been, it could have been something people could cheer for. Like, Hey, they're, they're married. They're, they're together. That's great. But I would say generally speaking, it's much easier to go, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Like, this, you know, PDA, like, get out yeah. of here. Ew, cooties. Yeah. But if oh we can get to those, you know, like the, the Randy Savage, Elizabeth moments yeah. where it's like, oh, my goodness, like, they She's care. always loved him. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they care about each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, like, Elizabeth. <laughs> right. Man, right now. This is a good time. Let's have some fun, man. We've been talking wrestling all night. Yep. Let's get into the fun. Can, can I get one? Can I get one more? Oh God! This, this, this is once in a lifetime. So, oh God, so, Kenny, I caught a stream of yours last year. Wow. Um, okay. Where you like? I'm. I'll I'll do some shameless self promotion as well. Sure. Uh, since T- TZ uh, did one, uh, I host a podcast called One Nation Radio. With my boy James Boyd. And uh-huh. we, we cover lots of Joshi. Um, oh great! And um, we talk fantastic. about Stardom, Tokyo Joshi Pro. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He, he talks a lot about it. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yep. <laughs> he's so he's so good. <laughs> Keep it going. Like you, you were, uh, I believe you were with uh, Mike Jabali, and um, you, you were speaking very passionately about the, the Joshi that came into AEW and their professionalism yep. and never having a problem with them. Can you expand on that? And and why did you decide to speak up for them? Like with uh, you know. They've obviously faced a lot of vile racism. They've faced they have. Um, a lot of, you know, just just ignorance. Um, they have, what, yeah. what made you really stand up for, for them? Um, if I'm to speak frankly, uh, a lot of these... So, coming from living in Japan for almost 11 years, uh, on the social media... On, I mean, of course, you're going to see it everywhere. Yeah, at least to a small degree, to some sort of degree, you're gonna find trolls. You're gonna you're gonna find people who exist solely to try to make someone's life miserable. Um, but you'll never see it to a degree like you will in wrestling, like you will in America. And so a lot of these joshi are coming here. They're trying to learn a new language. They're trying to live in a world that is very very foreign to them and is very difficult for them to acclimate to to adjust to. They're trying this American TV style where they're getting a lot less time than what they're used to, and they have to hear these cues being screamed at them from the referees and from you know people in gorilla position, and they're still killing it. They're the most, I would say, from from year one onwards, they were so reliable, <clears throat> never had a bad performance, and I really believe showed just a, a, a level of professionalism and a level of just dedication of their craft uh, from a technical standpoint and to hear them ask me like why does everyone hate me like why do people say these things about me why do they want me to die why do they want me to get hurt um you know like wh- why are they calling me a schoolgirl? and i don't i can say like hey just people can be terrible sometimes like and it sucks that you have to listen to that but that's not everybody um, Rio, for example, you know, went through a tough time when, when a lot of people thought it was great to, no matter what she posted at any point in time to, to go onto her social media and, and to say something super derogatory, um, because to them or because what someone had taught them, that's not what a female wrestler should look like. And sure, not every female, um, well, and this goes without saying, not every wrestler looks the same. Not, not every wrestler is built the same. Not every wrestler has the ability to be built the same. And, you know, um, 
not everyone's gonna look like Big Bertha Faye, you know what I mean? In 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 the female wrestling world. Mm -hmm. Can we have people like that? Absolutely, and I want people like that. But just because someone isn't a complete brick shit house doesn't mean that they haven't committed their entire lives to doing what we do and aren't like genuinely organically over with the crowd. Like Riho when she would come out eruption. Eruption. I miss Riho. And Erupted. and people and you know, you I would have she would get fan mail from all these little girls saying like, oh my God, like, you know, like from their mothers or from the, 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 ch the child themselves, like she wants to be just like you, you know, you've, you've kind of empowered her. Like it's sort of like the different comparison, but it's kind of like the Rey Mysterio Jr. effect a little bit yeah. where it's like, yeah, you know, you were smaller, but you, you took it to the larger opponent and you're an incredible champion. You brought a smile to my face. Like, and that's, that really, I think should, should just trump everything in my opinion. Um, so for them to kind of get that, sort of treatment and it even sometimes it was resi residually because of me because there are people that hate what i do and because they knew that i had a, a hand in maybe signing them and introducing the world to maybe their style or a different style it's like oh you represent what kenny does and we hate kenny so i'm going to come up with a reason to hate you and for me there were there was a time when i was really perturbed with it and then it did bother me um i can take criticism all day i don't really care um I'm just used to it, you know, but I feel like even in real life, it's like as soon as you start to hurt friends or family or pets, you know what I mean? I feel like that's when I start to take offense. Mm -hmm. and that's when I started to feel like, man, like you're giving these guys a, raw, a real raw deal. And I think that there was people have turned around on it a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, especially just very recently, we've had Sheeta just kill it with Jamie. We've had Sakura yeah. come back and, People, I know people were saying, like, you know, what's Sakura doing here? You know, she doesn't belong here. I, what a waste of a contract. She killed it with Jamie. It's like, these people know what they're doing. They're fantastic. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that they're having the opportunity to kind of, even if they don't quiet the naysayers, I feel that even the naysayers will watch and they're like, oh, darn, like, I feel like I still have to parrot what my favorite says. I'm at least going to keep my mouth shut now because I know that was f***ing great. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm glad to see them kind of like eat their own words a little bit and feel like, yeah, oh, I'm not going to say <laughs> about this one. It's like, I can try. So maybe like, I'll, all right, you know what I mean? we'll give you that. Yeah, I'm exactly. Like, all right, yep. yeah. You enter their mind a little bit, a little piece of it. Yeah. Take a little bit of them. But for me, you know, of course, I have a personal connection because for me, when I, when I was – kind of down on the entire professional wrestling scene. You know, it, was, it was watching the Joshi that brought me back into, into finding my own passion for wrestling because it was the passion in which they perform and, and what they do uh, when the odds are against them, when people have already counted them out, the passion that they show is on a complete other level than people that maybe become complacent in the workplace mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah, I'll be booked either way. I'll be booked next week. I'll be booked the week after that. So this is the performance you get. You had these women in the ring fighting for their lives where yeah. it's like we never we may never get this chance ever again i'm going to give you everything and seeing that passion just resonated with me and um then kind of getting closer to that scene and seeing that geez these girls train five days a week six days a week sometimes seven days a week and show sometimes me two times a day yeah yeah and i was like show me show me people in any other country that do that you know what i mean that's the kind of dedication that i want on, on yeah. a product of course, people all shapes, all sizes, all countries, you know, everything. And that's, we want complete re representation. But I think the Joshi is a very important, integral part to that. Appreciate it. I had to, had to ask about that. Cause oh, I, yeah. I had never seen you uh, so fired up. Like, you know, it, it, it was like, I watched, it was about six minutes long. And it was just like, wow, he's pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of when it was at, at its height. So, yeah. 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 But again, yeah. it's just like, you gotta, you live, you learn, you, you have to change your mindset. I try to. Just try at least to be open it. it. Yeah. At least open it. Yeah. Like I don't think we're ever going to change anybody's, but at least like no. be a little bit more open. Yep. To receiving something new, you know, like especially if you you're literally coming to our product, this is what we offer. Yeah. Be and open to it. <laughs> that and that, that's what I loved about like you know like year one of our company was like we had, you know, a lot of people would say like maybe there's too many cooks in the kitchen where we had like you know Tony's ideas for stories we would have the Bucks we would have mine and then we'd have you know Cody's ideas and if I had to work with Cody on a story, the way that we'd go about it might be completely different and it wouldn't, it might not work. But I think it's because we had that variety that it, it brought interest to the company. I don't, I think too much of the same, same is only going to get the same, same amount of people showing up. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
you need to have that variety. So I exactly. think it's very important. Whether it's like traditional or not. Right. Yep. Sometimes unconventional does work. Yeah, whether it's about the style that you're showing, the way that you're telling your stories, the types of people that you're representing. I mean, it needs to be a smorgasbord. It needs to be all different flavors and sizes for sure. Absolutely. In my opinion. Well, Rich got his rocks off. <laughs> Thank God. I know he's been holding that in for a while. Once again. About 17 years. <laughs> you know, well, well, the fact that, like, you know, this interview was supposed to happen a while ago, so he's been waiting to yeah, know, pop, true. pop that one off for a minute. We're going to have some fun a little bit, man. Like, let's go into some, like, pop culture stuff. Yeah. What's going on? What is, all right, so what was the last Marvel movie everybody seen? I know you said you took your son to see Wakanda, or? I was just about to watch it. I was just yeah. about to watch it. You haven't it. watched it yet? Yeah. No, I, I had oh, okay. it. So I was like, uh, so Nakazawa <laughs> showed up uh, day before TV. Yeah. Or like, hey, like, we could watch a show or whatever. Because we're, we're going to train. I said, but let's watch, like, maybe let's watch a movie before we he's train. Like, he's like, or. <laughs> yeah. But then I looked, and I'm like, two hours and 47 minutes? Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, man, it's like before work. Like, and I'm already, like, half through my pre-workout. I was like, yeah. maybe not a movie today, you know? Yeah. So I will watch it. I'm it's really just, looking forward to it. But I just, I did it. Angela Bassett being mad for most of the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Win next hell. Like, <laughs> It's just a battle of land. That's all it is. Battle of land. It's just literally just water and land, you know. But um, like I don't know. I haven't been too keen on. I'm I'm honestly more interested to see what DC does right right now. Oh yeah, DC cooking, bro. I'm honestly a little bit more sick. Like I I I just recently like laid down and watched uh, Black Adam, Mm -hmm. and I don't um, I'm a naysayer in a lot of the critics about it. I was like, you liked it? Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, but everybody's just so, so oversaturated with the fact that it's just not Marvel. Yep. I think that's where it is. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's not Marvel. But I'm like, yeah. it doesn't have to be. It's just it's doing its own thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. But it, uh, uh, for like, me, it's Dare like, to Dream. Jesus. <laughs> like, one of my favorite shows of the year was uh, Peacemaker. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Like, I loved it. Like, I mean, it, it's, just, it's such a great blend of action, comedy, um, John Cena is a man for for doing what how as well as he did in that role. Jeez, it's like I'm so excited for season two if there is one. I'm sure there is. Oh, yes, it's it's coming. It's coming. Um, so yeah, no, I'm with you, DC, and you know what? I'm a huge and have been forever huge DC animated fan. Yes, their animated oh movies God, are incredible. so good. Um, like nothing that they put out, I would say recently is like in my like top five or anything for like right. DC animated movies. But like I watched uh, Super Sons. Okay, and it was uh yeah so so Damian was, Wayne yeah and uh, Superman's kid um it was it was really well done it was really well I, I like really the enjoyed it part one and two of Long Halloween yes I did too Excellent. I love that it was like a detective, detective story that's why that I, was yeah. so cool no, they do the detective uh, the deck the, the detective Batman so well yep. in the animated I, I I like I think I might have watched them all especially when they like as Batman and um. Uh, son of Batman, and they start yep. doing like the team ups and like the, uh, like I love those movies. I yep. love them. I get so attached to them. Even like I try to find other ones too that like branches off to the other Justice League members. Yeah, they're so good. They are. They're very they're good. So good. Now, why is the Rock trying to ruin the DCU, man? Why is he blowing it up? I don't know why. Because I was I was really looking forward to seeing the Superman thing. Yeah, hearing some of those rumors. Yeah, man. I was I looking know. forward. I was really too, looking. Bro. I was like, hey, I'm like, all right, too. all right, we cooking. No, we're not. I'm just not looking forward to the Mortal Kombat. I'm pissed off. <laughs> I'm a Mortal Kombat, man. I am fascinated with Mortal Kombat. And You're I, Street Fighter. Guy. I'm Street Fighter, but you know what? I was going to say the, the latest Mortal Kombat that came out, like the animated one. The uh, animated one, yes. But yeah, the live so action one. Oh, good. Yeah. No, I, okay, so the live action one, I'm I'm always... I. So the first movie I could still put in every every day of my oh, life. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Every day it's, of my life. It's just, 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 for the, just for the, yeah, just for the soundtrack itself. Just for the soundtrack yeah. itself. I love You're it. You're rocking. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think so? No, I hate it. Okay. No, no, I'm talking about the uh, Raiden. Uh, Raiden, I love Raiden. So. Oh yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> God, it's, it's, so, it's so bad, it's good great. man. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. I don't think so. <laughs> so okay, going back in the day, I watched it in the theaters first day, and I was like, okay, that first Liu Kang scene, cool. Um, Johnny Cage's scene where he's like, you know. This is where you fall down. You know what I mean? This is where you fall down or whatever. And I was like, okay. Terrible cool. CGI in the background. <laughs> that, oh yes. That's where I'm going with it. So then, so that, that's where I'm going with it. So eventually we get to the part where Shang Tsung's like, Reptile. 
go keep an eye on her, like for Katana. Yeah. And I'm like, see this terrible CG lizard. I'm like, that's reptile. <laughs> I was like, oh no, no. And then like, you know, we got like Liu Kang fighting like the unknown like, uh, tiger dude eating in the yep. sand. Oh god, <laughs> who, who's a great who's a great martial artist by the way. I've seen yeah. him in tons of films. Yeah. Um, that was a guy from W uh, yeah. W Mac Masters, I believe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I did y'all research? I didn't go and on then, that. And then you know, <laughs> we got, then we had Art oh, Lean yeah. versus Goro, and I was like, oh man, poor Art Lean. You know, <laughs> cool story. But then, yeah. but then, when you finally got Johnny Cage against Scorpion, oh. I was like, okay. Now yeah. we're talking. Yeah, well, and my, I, but when my man fell through the teleportation and then fell on the on the uh, on the wooden thing, it was like all the way there and fell down and got right back. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, into the bridge. Yeah, yeah. the welcome. And, then, and Luke Kang, every yeah. fight with Hill reacted. Yeah. Yeah. Every single fight, he was, I was like, yeah. I'm, That's I'm what I'm I want Luke Kang to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, then. Better than Cole, I'll tell you that much. Then Boy. in the end, when like they're in the outworld, and too. like Luke Kang's walking in the background, <laughs> Johnny Cage's like, hey, what are you doing, Luke? What are you doing? And he grabs the, the <laughs> CG like, thing fight. and throws it. <laughs> he throws it into like the statue, and I'm like, he threw it in a statue, and there's, like, worms grabbing at this thing. Oh, I'm yeah. like, okay. And then, like, it turns into the reptile we know. Yeah. And it's got the arcade voice, like, the reptile. Yep. And, like, the, the, that techno music comes on, and they just have the best fight of the whole movie. I was like, oh, okay. This is greatest. This is the yeah. greatest. Yeah. yeah. I remember all of it. <laughs> you remember all of that, though. Yeah. You don't really remember blur. much of Cole. Like I, I've I watched the new one, and I still have to remember. Like, oh yeah, Liu Kang wasn't that, and no, so was Cabal and all that. Yeah, I would definitely take a what was a ninety two when that movie came oh, out. No, it was like ninety one, ninety five, yeah, 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 ninety five. I'll definitely take ninety five Goro. Like they actually I would too, for over sure. the CGI and Goro. Him coming just, onto Earth Realm and beating up a shed. I yeah. think in general, people are starting to, especially from our age, like people are starting to really appreciate more like practical effects over so CG. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Your yeah. strong effect is that you have a strong breastbone plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He got a hard sweater. Cute. No, my thing was like... But the new Mortal Kombat, just if I could just wrap it all up, I didn't like the soundtrack, and I felt that... Oh. One, one, and I thought I thought one thing that the first movie had was that you felt the impact. Yeah. You needed to you needed to pump up that bass for any time there was a strike that was hit. It felt like light. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like there was, yeah. a, there was a lot of... Whoosh. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Ah, no, give me some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you took the opening intro... And made the movie the rest of that. Like, it was yeah. Scorpion's Revenge. That's basically what they did. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was. It was which is great. But great, but like, amazing. As, a, as an animation, yep. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, you, you, you had it right there. But then they just, they just lost it and it went to a whole other. Then, and then the main character, Cole, kept getting beat up. And he yeah. kept losing. And I'm like, ah, no. He's no. a pushover, man. He was a pushover. And I'm like, yeah. you gotta, yeah. he's leading this arm. He's leading this fight. No. And that's another thing I like. I like to do a lot of like uh, watch a lot of movie like flashback retro reviews and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, they were like so. The whole point of like the first uh, Mortal Kombat movie, like back in '95, was the fact that they were building up this like Shang Tsung was building up this army to do what? Because they never they got the army and they I didn't guess, amount to anything. Yeah, <laughs> just, mobilizing they the Earth Realm, I guess, <laughs> yeah. trying to merge the realms. <laughs> yeah. I, was it the or was it annihilation? I think it was my annihilation. annihilation. Okay, annihilation. Yeah. yeah, it's just like oh. like this army. We're here. Oh, we're almost yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, and then they just like okay, no, no, the army never fought or it never did anything. It just they just happened. Yeah, that in that movie too. Like even though yeah, Ooh. like I'll uh, oh, I can't one. I can't really say much about it, but I will say that I got that reptile moment in the beginning. Yeah, with me where I was like. Oh shit! They're fighting smoke, and they fought smoke to the you know again cool techno music yeah, like you did with with real. reptile, and I was like, okay, this is great. Like Katana and Liu Kang versus smoke, that was pretty freaking cool. Um, and then that was that was the peak. That was the whole peak. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, that's what I got. That was it, man. Yeah, that once Sub Zero well, came in, like f- flying, kind of in like Iceman, <laughs> had a whole different outfit. Yeah, yeah he just didn't. And he made the ice bridge. You and killed really, my older brother. Yeah. To me, those are equivalents to like my heart breaking when I'm watching X Men movies. Yeah, like, that's some, I'm like, first, I think First Class was actually probably the best one. Yeah, but yeah, that First one Class was, was probably it was. the best it was. one. Yep, absolutely. Except, but every movie after that, uh, Jennifer Lawrence's forehead kept getting further back with the makeup department, and they kept pushing yeah. the wig back. I'm like, why? Yeah. yeah, I'm like, what? What is going on, Jennifer? And then like, the Dark Phoenix one. Oh, actually. 
before we even got to Dark Phoenix, it was like, what was, what was the one before Dark Phoenix? Apocalypse, yeah. Yep. Days of Future Past. I like that one, too. That, that was a solid one. But I'll say, like, hey, look, like, out of all that stuff, like, all those arcs, they were all done better in, in the 90s cartoon. Every yeah. single one of them. Every yeah. single one of them. Mm-hmm. It's hard Dark to, Phoenix, Days of Future Past. Um, it's, it's hard to rip. Apocalypse, of course. This is like, are you kidding me? They're so not even better. They're not getting cable right. They're not getting. Nah. Uh, I, and like, and I try call, to like the, the the Deadpool cable. I was yeah. Just, it just. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they like, call me old fashioned, but like. Cable's got to be jacked, man. He's got to be yeah. just, like super jacked. But they were riding off like, of Josh Arnold. Brolin's. Yeah, height. he was he was hot with the whole. Um, like I Thanos feel like I, I really want my X Men to kind of like that. You know, that is why I think that, and it wasn't just because it was in Japan. I feel like the Wolverine when he was in Japan. Yes, those are my favorite ones. Really, because yeah, because. It, because got a little boring to me. Not because you, Jack, well, I, I like I like the bullet, I like the, I like the bullet <laughs> train scene. I like the bullet the train bullet scene. Tra- but I, I, I rather I and think bullet train did it better. <laughs> true, true. But th- we didn't know that was coming up. Yeah. And and because to me, Hugh Jackman was just jacked. He was. I loved awesome. to see it. I loved. He I was, was like, awesome. this guy wants to be the hero he's portraying. Yes. And yeah. I felt that. Yeah. So yeah. I loved it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Samurai oh, robot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, had on like a high. That was weird, yeah. But uh, like, I was like, oh, we're doing Silver Samurai, and for some reason, I kept thinking like X Men: Children of the Atom arcade version, where it's like he's gonna be just like a samurai, like a normal samurai, but with really silver shiny armor. No, instead he was like a, a mech. Yeah, he's. I was like, he's fighting Gundam. <laughs> I was like, that's what it was. Yeah, it was a huge samurai Gundam. <laughs> I think I think that's the issue with a lot of these things. They all go. They make them big. They make them giant. I'm like, yeah. No, stop making everybody so like 12 feet tall. Yep. That's the, like I don't I don't I don't know. Like I felt Thanos was like 20 feet tall. Yeah. But he's really not that. He's that more big. like thick than tall. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. like he's just, he's just not that far off from like a Hulk. But I like, think he's supposed to be like what 450 or like 500 pounds looking. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. But he's just not. He's not 30 feet. He's not. You know what I mean? He large enlarges scale every movie. Like is anyone Christ. here uh, looking forward to Ant Man by chance? I am. I, I am too. I, I want to see what Kang, I gotta see Kang man. I John I Majors see, I'm is looking killing. Fa- yeah, I'm looking forward to Kang. I'm looking forward to Modok. Um, yeah. That's the this is the, my last chance with MCU. This is the one that yeah. gotta pull me. They gotta pull me back in. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So that being said, did none of us here like Shang Chi because I did like it. Shang Chi was great. Okay, just making sure. Shang Chi really, was great. I really did enjoy. I actually it. I did, did see it, it twice. I did yeah. went to the theater to see it twice. It was worth watching twice. I think it was that good. Yeah, for absolutely. Me. Just super fun, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, but it was like like the the fight scenes felt practical. Yes, it was felt well, authentic, was a- and I was like, ooh, okay, they are throwing. Yep. So that that wheeled me back in, but this uh, I, kind of forever didn't blow me away. It didn't like I didn't. Like they did the tribute to Chadwick, beautifully done. Yep. Beginning of the movie, end of the movie is beautifully done. But I felt like it was so heavy on those that the story and the villains were kind of like, yeah. yes, mm. yes. And, and that's sort of why I, yes. I remember you said the same thing. Yes, they should. They should have. In my opinion, they should have took a little bit more time because I feel like they were just. They he wrote the script and it was just like, okay, we're just gonna do it. We're gonna honor Chad, but then it took. Not saying it should have took away, you know, take the focus off it, but there was a lot of things. You could tell there were certain holes that they were making. They were just trying to get it done, and also in the time that they that time for that they had. Hey, let's do this. They probably were writing with a lot of emotion. Absolutely, he was probably writing with yeah. a lot of emotion. So no, sometimes, they were, no, they were rewriting. Right, re- that was exactly. Yeah, very cute. Right, right. They were rewriting so with that. Th- that could tend to be, you know, you could tend to poke some holes. You know, see some holes in your writing sometimes when that happens, and you're kind of in a rush. But I was feeling like there were certain things. I was like, eh, with the story, they could have, you know, they could have accentuated more more points and different things and. You know, then they um, it looked like just the real the real center of the movie. It, it, like I said, on the joke earlier, it really was centered around like Angela Bassett trying to keep all this together. Yeah, from Chad being yeah. gone, she's trying to keep uh, her daughter, you know, in um in, in good spirits and her team and uh, and the, and protecting the land and everything like that. And then it, it was soul food, bro. It was the movie Soul Food. Yes, it was. Black Mama yeah. trying to keep all the kids together. Like, <laughs> yeah. like that's all it was. Yeah, and, and, and get through all the traumas. They and don't want to talk about it tonight. And, and and like, to oh, the, no, I'm not dealing with this. I'm yeah. like, walk to a room, storm the room. And, and, like, get, to oh. Uncle, and get to Uncle Pete's money. 
<laughs> <laughs> Which is the suit. I um I didn't I wasn't even satisfied with the, the final fight. Me neither. Uh, and on the beach. Me neither. I was just like, uh, it was. It didn't. It, it, it didn't pack that punch. Like you know, what I mean, and you can talk about like the. The um, first Black Panther final fight scene that had a lot of criticism with those just CGI, and yeah, a lot of video gamey looking. It did, yeah. It looked like I was watching it. an episode of Dragon Ball Z for sure. Yeah, a little bit. It, it felt yeah. like it looked like reboot. Yeah, oh, reboot wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh boy, <laughs> okay. Gee, that's but, going back. Now yeah. my man Mbaku looking weak too, boy. Mbaku Mbaku couldn't make, asshole, he couldn't bro. make no decisions in this second one. He was so confused, boy. <laughs> He's and he's getting his ass whipped too. I was like, "Dang, he could yeah. have my dog looking stronger." Man. I think that's my problem with at Phase Four. It's just like a lot of these characters we built up for so many different phases. They're just t- t- taking hits. Like, yeah, Hulk took a hit. Like Doctor Strange took a hit. He did. Yeah, like I, I'm like, dude, we built these guys up to beat Thanos in two movies in ten years. Yep. Like, God, now they're everybody's just like taking a hit with their powers. They're taking a hit with just like um, their emotions. Some like Hulk couldn't. Get his green on. Yeah. She Hawk is like whooping his ass. I'm like, oh <laughs> Lord, low key is in jail. I'm like, whoa. Like it's just a lot of these guys we've invested like 10 plus years in either died or they just took hits to build up other new characters yep. to take on the next phase. So got knocked down a level. Yeah, I think that's why I think my favorite my favorite thing that's emerged from the MCU, which it doesn't even count really, because it's not real is uh the what if series i love the yeah. what if series yep. fantastic yep excellent yeah excellent I th- and stuff. i thought it i thought it told the uh the sort of dark doctor strange um i thought they were going to go story better better than what you know the actual oh, yeah. doctor strange um was it multiverse of madness is that what it was or something like that yeah yeah, yeah it was, it was they madness. did it better than that mad something, something kind of madness. <laughs> they went to one universe <laughs> yeah but i mean i i'm i am um a huge fan of benedict cumberbatch as, a, as an actor fantastic Abs- Fantastic. Huge, huge fan. So anytime he reprises that role, like, look, I'm going to watch for sure. And he's going to do a fantastic job, but you can only do so much with the, you know, the writing. So, yeah. um, yeah, I feel like teaming up with Disney hasn't, hasn't necessarily hurt them because they've come up with some great stuff since then. Mm-hmm. But I think this latest phase has been easily the weakest in my, yeah. in my humble opinion. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got it. And then it's nothing this. to do with the characters. It's, it's just the writing. That's it. Yeah. That's it. It's, but they're not changing writers. They didn't change any writers. It's just how they're writing the characters. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah. my goodness. I know you want to build these people up, but we'll we'll get there. But damn, like don't don't hurt my Hulk. <laughs> right. Don't hurt my Thor. Yeah. That's why I'm I'm, I, I'm not even gonna say my Thor because I'm not even a big Thor guy. But me neither. Yeah. But I I, I think I like sat and watched like uh, we we're on the uh, the Jericho cruise and like I just left Thor Love and Thunder on. Yep. But I never sat and watched it. I was just sitting. I'm like. No, I know. Oh, what? It was just like then there was a bunch of kids with the hammers, and they got. I'm like, what? What is happening right now? It was just even watching on mute. I understood it, and I didn't understand it at the same time. It's a really weird combination. I just, I don't know, man. Um, video games. What's coming out? I know you AEW just got fight forever. Uh, forever. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so it's totally coming out. <laughs> I'm really drunk today. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, oh, we, I'm, we, I'm, we, I'm kidding we, around. I'm kidding around. No, we're back to T, or are we yeah. back to or are we M team. Yeah, oh, we are back to yeah, T. We, okay. we, I, I'm not sure how how much we had to scale it back, but like, man, I I freaking loved it. You could you could make the ring look like a murder scene if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, I I just hope we, there's still some way to get like a semblance of that. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't hope we don't like dumb it down too much. Right. It was fun, man. Because I mean, it's it's that's what we get every week on TV anyway. You yeah. know? Yeah. There was there was it was it could get gory, but it's like no one's getting dismembered, no one's dying. Damn. It's just like a. Maybe I mean maybe you could look that way if you beat someone up that bad. But I mean, trigger finish them. Yeah, like (laughs) it's again. There are a lot of things we haven't shown in the game yet. Um, And is good, right? 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 And and there's there's anything you can give us here by any chance? I Uh, I figured I'd ask. I mean, like what I will say is that the game is not a wrestling simulator. And, and I'm thank pr- God. I'm, I'm sure I've said that at some point before. Thank, thank God. I, I looked at other wrestling simulator games, and like I know people <laughs> love them. I know people love them. Ah, and there please. is a place, there absolutely is a place for them, but I feel like if we go the simulation route, no one's ever going to do it better than Fire Pro. 
because they've had yep. decades and decades and decades of practice doing that, and they have the system all implemented. So what Ukes does best is they have that arcade style of wrestling, and then what um, it was a smart way to go. And what our guys uh, do best is is the animation. The guys from uh, the Aki projects from way back when, doing the virtual pro wrestling and No Mercy and and WWF two thousand or WrestleMania two thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, so having those guys Love it. Um, cook up some of the animations to correct some of the old animations um, and to kind of seminar the Ukes people into how they go about doing their stuff uh, rather than mocap, you know, but, but taking um, like the, the point articulation or whatever. So like, you know, the elbow moves this way, the fingers move this way, you know, the, to, to show the generation of movement of velocity of force. It's kind of like an ongoing process. Um, so it, it does suck that yes, the rating has held us back a little bit because we really, really, really wanted to get it out. The more, the longer the time goes by, this finished product we have of a game is just going to be a little, it's going to look a little dated, right? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. sure, a lot of the same people are going to be there. A lot of the same people are there, but some some aren't. And then you're going to wonder why I've seen this guy on TV for weeks and weeks and weeks now. Why isn't he in the game? Well, it's because the game's been done, but mm-hmm. we've had to try to get our, our game in a position to be rated so that we can sell it. Right, right. So, um, now I can I can positively say that we're we're headed back into a right direction, um, but again this fun and zany stuff that I was able to implement um, I hope people have fun with it like yeah. I I think I think that the game really shines when you can do the crazy stuff, but also um, if you want again much like AEW uh, if you want to have just like a serious bare bones wrestling match you can definitely wrestle the way that you want to and it will look that way. But if you want to do crazy stuff, if you if you want to have you know like uh, if you want to ride around on a skateboard and like do a drop kick on on somebody, you know what I mean? Like you can do it. It's, it's there's a lot of fun stuff like that implemented. Exactly. Yeah. Like As it should be. Yeah. I want I want I want to do AEW bowling like little side yeah. little mini games. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean you're gonna you're gonna get the home run derby. You're gonna get you're gonna get oh. all that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Remember Slugfest? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wanna, yeah. That's what I'm talking. Throw that in there too. I love it. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of fun stuff, you know, like uh, it's like like Yakuza. There was a multitude of things. Exactly. Like Yakuza. Yep. Yep. Like you know, you get serious. It gets so we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna actually. I was I was just having a chat with uh, some of the folks today, and we're we're coming. We're gonna roll out with some more details and some more footage. Thankfully, because I really feel that people deserve kind of a, a deeper look at what's been ready for a while. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, hopefully some of the fun stuff that I'm talking about um, can actually be seen in its. Uh, in its zany, in its zaniest, hopefully. So, uh, like, even just, like, th- being able to pour thumbtacks on anything. Like, thumbtacks in a game is, just, I don't know, it's 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 fun to me, you know? It is fun. I can't say yeah. I've ever seen thumbtacks. No, that's why I really yeah. wanted them implemented yeah. in the game. Yeah. I thought, like, yeah. That's, like, a, that's an interesting physic, too. Yeah, to it is. Like, trying it to is. nail down. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like, every time you go in this extra section, like, the crypt... The character of the player needs to interact or like re- no, it's like to it needs it. to show. Like, yeah, you know, right. It's a very interesting mechanic, I think. But then, yeah, but then every every kind of unique weapon has to have its own unique set of physics too. So that's, yep. of course, that's a challenge. Like, um, if you have a chair, great, you have a chair, but that doesn't mean the chair reacts the same way a ladder does. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so mm-hmm. it takes yep. you have to go back to the drawing board to program how it is that you can interact with the ladder, how you inter- how you can interact with the table. Um, Things that are on fire, maybe a uh, wet floor sign, a garbage can. There are different things you can do with all those items. So, um, getting those all uh, kind of glitch free or as glitch free as possible. And I know, like fans out a lot there, of codes. I, I was gonna say, I know, I know, fans out there. They're gonna they're gonna have a heyday trying to find all the the funny stuff that they can. And I know they're gonna find it. Everyone always finds glitches oh, in yeah. everything. It'll be it'll be whatever. I'll laugh. I'll laugh. But. Um, we, I, I would expect to very soon start to see uh, some new uh, information. And That's video, awesome. of course. You know, a company oh, yeah. video as well. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I've been playing, uh, in terms of video games, I've been playing Dead Space. Dead Space Remake. Oh, yeah. It's been fun. I yeah. need to finish it. I still never finished the original. But I'm, I might just um, yeah. I thought I forgot remake. all about about all of it. But now that I'm playing, I'm like, oh, this is where this happens. This is where this happens. This is just yeah. kind of like a fun like trip down. Memory that's lane. A bad. That's a little sad to me though. Like we got to play remakes in order to get our fix now. I know. It's just, Hawk, the yeah. new oh, shit is just it, terrible oh, right now. I'm like, no. I just what? picked up that boxing game that that did new one. Try that, that undisputed. It's it pretty, came out. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah. It's pretty cool. Like, what? You know, yeah. Like, I, I wanted to tell you. 
I'm but playing it on, go playing to it on war, PC. Right? They dropped it for PS5, I believe. Yeah, oh, yeah. We gotta yeah. go to war, bro. Yeah, you know Deontay Wilder's on it and everything? They're, oh, Fury. The, I, the I, physics look good, too. Yeah. I've been watching like clips on Twitter for like a year. I didn't even know yeah. it came yeah, out. Yeah, I got yeah. it the other I day. And um, it's that's like. The, that's the only reason the PS3 is right here because we've still been playing <laughs> Fight Night 3, bro. Really? Fight wow. Night 3 is my gym. Or, um, now, look, all the stuff that we were talking about, about, you know, teamwork and, you know, not being competitive with each other. That's out the window with me and him playing. <laughs> That's when the two lions come out. And that beat goes on. In that game, we are quite, we're sitting right next to each other. We take the longest rounds and the longest time, and go. we go Run it. at it. Run it. And Run we it. are at it. And it's I've it's, sweat playing him on fight night, man, so many times. You talk about a chess oh. physically. That is something. I, now, yeah. look, we don't stream stuff live as much as we used to and stuff like that but you people out there maybe one day we'll get you a look might, on might be, you maybe. ain't gonna get a whole lot of talking so if you watch it just know we ain't talking to a lot of yeah. talking we're focused but yeah I gotta censor myself cause I get a little oh yeah hey, I get a little hasty <laughs> what, what's the game what, bring, what game brings that out of you Street Fighter Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll it's play Street Fighter. I get I get like the like anxiety sweat and like oh. I have like the whole, I have like the Homer Simpson like sweat outline on my body when I get up from the couch. You know what I mean? Because this is it. I'm just focused. I'm there, dude. I'm, I don't and I don't I don't really talk too much like, yeah. like you guys. But like it was hard when I was trying to learn how to be like a streamer, and I still haven't learned. You know, it's but when I was streaming in Japan and I would play, yeah, and I I try to play against guys that were really really good. It's it's tough to. To kind of be a showman and a performer, but then, dude, expect horribly to, hard. Expect to like put on a performance that people that are watching your stream expect to see. Yeah, Oof. yeah, it was tough. I uh, there are a lot of streamers out there that make a lot of money, but um, the ones that do it by playing games and being incredibly good at said game, but interacting with their fan base, that's. Not as easy as it looks, and yeah, dude, especially rough. when you're playing competitively yeah. against somebody else. Yeah. Oh my god, it's like basketball with me. I'll sit there and I'll play. I'll be playing as the whole team, and the dude would be under the board, the center, be like seven two, and he'll miss one rebound. I'm like, how'd you miss that? You're seven two. Like, dude, I'll be, I'll be you lose it. Yeah, like I'll be spazzing playing basketball, but I don't football. He beats my ass all the time, and I'm cool. It's like, okay. You know <laughs> what I mean? But, but basketball? That's something about basketball, man. I yeah, lose it. I don't know what it is about playing that game. Because for me, in basketball games, it's like it's you can have error after error after error after error in basketball, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll just sink into this hole <laughs> after a while. Football, you get like one or two mistakes, and you're like, okay. But, like, basketball, it's just, it's, it's just too many – Room too much room for error because the game's moving so fast. Yeah, dude. You Are you talking about playing or playing, watching or, or like video? Kind of bo- the video game version. Video, of it. Oh, video game. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Especially oh, yeah. when you're playing against someone. Oh god, if the person's wide open and miss. I lose it. Like yeah, dog, you're, you're there's you, no excuse. Dog, you're wide open, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I get I get personal. Like I'm paying you too much money <laughs> to be missing this goddamn corner shot on the three. I looked at your rating. You, you got an 89 of corner th- shot three. You got badges for it in your ass. What help? Yeah, I trade people. Even even if we're playing exhibition, they go date on the team. No more. <laughs> <laughs> like this, That's this, great. You're in franchise mode. No, they're not here anymore. It's kind of like the trade deadline. I think today. the last time I was, oh my God. <laughs> last time I got real serious about basketball, like in a game version. I think it was. I don't know if you guys played it. It's not like legit, legit. Yeah, yeah. But it was super fun for us. We played NBA playgrounds. Dude, uh, I it, never it, played it, but it I was, watched it was, other people play it. It was a lot of like it was really nostalgic, like NBA yeah. Jam vibes. Yeah. So I loved it. But same idea where it's like. Okay, you're on a breakaway, and you're you're for sure you should be able to dunk it. You know what I mean? And you oh. try, and it you know you get rejected or whatever, or like no one. You're like, <laughs> it's just like easy layup or whatever, and you go for the layup, and for some reason the game's algorithm make makes you miss. And yep. It's like it's like come on, like I could make this shot. Yep. You know what I mean? Like any like not me, like of course of course I could, but like <laughs> anybody could make this shot. Nick Jackson you know I mean? would make the shot for yeah, sure. Absolutely, yeah, Nick, Nick, yeah. <laughs> Nick, Nick Nick's are yeah. So we actually I don't. Look, I'm sure people maybe know, but we would play a lot in Japan, actually. Because they would have these huge, real cool places called uh, Spocha. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, there would be, like, batting cages. Like, pretty much, like, uh, Yakuza, the Yakuza games. Oh, yeah, yeah. Driving ranges, batting cages, mini golf, basketball courts, volleyball courts, badminton courts, tennis courts. It's all in one place. Roller skating. Um, And then a bunch of arcades, too. And we would just, like, hold a court. We'd be like, hey, whoever wants on. So we would do, like, 3v3s, like, all night long. And man, when we gonna get that in AEW, man? I, I know, that. right? Right? I want that. I want I, that. We so I really like? want that. <laughs> Yo, dog, Satin. 
I'm shooting threes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, Nick was always a reliable, like, I don't know what we would do. If, if Nick, for some reason, had a bad day and he fell apart, it'd be the same idea where it's like, come on, Nick, like, your only job is to hit the outside shot. <laughs> you know I mean? like, and I would, I would get, like, seriously offended. It's like, Matt and I, we can drive and miss all day. I'm not going to take blames. Like, but, Nick, you have to hit those threes. You know, that's <laughs> it. That's Steve, Steve Kerr, come on, bro. Yeah. You gotta hit this one. Come on, pack some. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. I'm like at this age. I'm like Magic Johnson. All flashy passes and no defense, baby. That's yeah, it. I, I help I'm all, all, I'm all doing. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm old school. Like, I'm like Larry Bird. I do like those weird like smack passes at guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> all doing like the around the head smack passes, like weird oh weird shit God. you never see the like in this pistol peats. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, elbows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever played. Like, you mentioned all the other sports, but for me. The worst one is baseball games. Like, you like that with baseball? Like, yes. Really? I, I've only ever broken one controller in my life, Ooh. and it's on baseball. And the thing is, is when you're pitching, and then you're shutting them out, you're getting a no-hitter going, and they hit a home run off of you. It is the most infuriating oh. thing you will ever Oh, that's ever, a lot of hard work. Ever yeah. Do. yeah. Like, I and, get that. You have it on Hall of Fame difficulty. There was, there was one game I was playing. Um, and it was like perfect game through nine, right? Oh, but it was zero zero because I'm playing on legend, so it's hard to hit the ball. But I can it's pitch, hard as shit. Right? It's hard as hell. But you get to the tenth inning, I'm like, man, my pitcher's tired. He has a perfect game. Literally, no <laughs> one's gotten to first base. Tenth inning, bring a reliever in, home run. And, and it's, <laughs> just like, yeah. and it's like you you just feel helpless. Like, and, and like <laughs> helpless. And it's like they, they, they how many hours? Decision. That's a two-hour game, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like a long. T- no, nah. like that's MLB getting my- the show. Like, yeah. that's, that's 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 getting blue-shelled Mario Kart. That's what that <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when you had like you in Mario Kart and you in the lead, and then you that damn banana pops up out of nowhere. Where that like, sh- yeah. where that green yeah. shell come yeah, from? Yeah, like how like Donkey Kong has unlimited bananas for some reason. <laughs> like, <laughs> man, I know exactly what you mean. Oh, like, no hitter littering the course. Minutes. Dude, yeah. I think that's what I need at this point. I need a good racing game. I haven't played a good yeah, racing either. game in a long time. They just There's dropped like the Need for Speed. There's a Need for Speed. They just dropped a new one, yeah. but it's like it cell shaded. Look. It's like weird. Yes, yes, it looks yeah. good, but it is cell shaded. I know exactly. Yeah, what you mean. I'm like ah. It was it, like the the reason why I think that's a a decent idea is because a game like that, if it's great, will be timeless because that sure. graphic style isn't going to age really. No, not yeah. at all. But I know what you mean. Like how you. You just want something to look a certain way. Yeah, I want to sink my teeth into it. And this just looks like I'm going to play it, and it's going to be done. I know I'm like, yeah. I want like a Need for Speed Underground Two, where I was like mm. sinking your teeth. You were an investor. That was the last one I was crazy about. God, Underground yeah. Two. Yeah, invested like me. on every part, every this, every that. Like you stocked up cars for certain races and then drifting. Like I, I don't mind Burnout that. either. Burnout's pretty cool. Burnout too. Paradise was yeah. incredible. Yep, incredible. I, I I played. I beat that game like front and back. And I was like, I'm hearing Forspoken was terrible. I'm hearing like, what, what what came out? What was the big release before that? Forspoken was is not good. Heat they had Need for Speed. No, no, I'm talking about like a like new game just games. Oh, okay. Yeah, just came out like kind of yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Callisto, Callisto Protocol. Protocol. Yeah, Heart, yeah. heard it was terrible. Which it was uh, that for me that was unbelievable because the trailers made it look so scary. They said it would look great. It looked great, but yep. just, you. Uh-uh. It looked like style over substance. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 That's where we're at, brother. A lot of these games and a lot lot of things, not just video games. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a lot of style over substance and a lot of these things. Like we did last day, we were just talking about this. Remember, you get those. A lot of times you plug in the old PS5 and you hear the day and you put in Tony Hawk and you're just like, damn, I miss this shit. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it had its flaws, but you didn't even care. Like, And I think this is why we're always looking forward to these remakes and remasters. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, oh my god, got it right. Oh, yeah. uh, just just remaster my Tony Hawk Underground, and I'll play the story. I know that story. I know the lines and that's the story mode back and forth, and I'll still play it like it just came out today. Yeah, I miss those games, bro. But man, we gonna wrap this up, man. We've kept you for a while. Thank Woo. you for hanging. It feels like it's been five minutes. It's a fun conversation. That's what we do. Yeah. Swear City, mate. Swear City sure, podcast man. is what we do. Man, episode 59 of the Swerve City Podcast. This has been awesome. If yep. you are been checking this out, you already know that you subscribe, youtube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. Man, TZ is in the studio with Rich Boy. Got a track coming out with Rich Boy. Crazy, crazy records. This is, so, this, this is going to be so much new music coming out. Absolutely. My album dropping in the spring. Rich Slotta over here cooking up. He's got some records 
that Dream have been machine. on. Check it out. Yes, you just dropped that actually. Just put that out. Proud to pay. Pay whatever you want for it. Rich a lot of putting in producing a lot of music for hey, AEW. Man, I, I'm, I'm working on a verse. I'm working. I'm working on a verse. I'm working on a verse for the. Bro. Hey yo yo. I don't, I don't, look. I don't, I don't know when this is going to. I don't know when it's gonna drop. I don't know when it's gonna drop. But but I, I'm working on a verse for the BTE rap. So oh, man. You, you can look forward oh, to that. Okay. Yeah, I got something to play for you yeah. when we wrap this up. Okay. Oh my god. We'll see how it goes, brother. The first foray into uh, we into that game. So we'll see for the fiftieth birthday of the hip hop. Genre, that's the gift right there. There we go. That's it right there. Yeah. That's what we're providing. It's beautiful, man. We had Rick Ross just headline the Grammys recently. Yep. So being affiliated with that man and watching him kill the Grammys. Main stage. event. Main event. Main bro. event. The that's Grammys. Main event, bro. He was main event. With Lil bro. Wayne and Jay Z and like, DJ Khaled, icons of this industry. Like, come on. Bro. And I can call this guy a friend. That is like. That's pretty cool. That is yeah. mind blowing to me. And like like I said, this business has taken me on some. What would very you say were your musical inspirations, by the way? Oh, um, for me, like if you see them right there on the wall, like uh, Travis Scott is a big one. Yep. Actually, um, this weekend I fly to L.A. and I get in the studio with Chase the Money, who just worked with Travis Scott and Don Tolliver. Yeah. So that's a dream come true. Um, oh, that's cool. cool. Uh, Tyler Creator, huge inspiration of mine. Uh, Kanye, of course, like classics. Like um, even Ross, man, his uh, song we did, John with Lil Wayne, yep. still one of like the most like incredible uh, instrumentals, verses, like hooks I've ever heard. Like this guy inspires me every time we're in the studio, Ooh. pushes me, Love taught it. me from ground Love up four it. years Love ago. It. Man, um, shoot, like that's what I'm scared about. It's like the people that I like, I could never like emulate it. It's like, oh. it's like. That's the challenge. So I was like, man, it's like I want my verse to sound like something like Busta Rhymes would do, or like you know, like Twista. Yeah. It's like I can't rap that fast. I want to. You know what I mean? I want to try though. I wish I could. I wish you could do it. I'll word. try. I'll try. Yeah, like mentored, if I were, yeah, you got mentored it, by Busta. You got yeah, for real? Yeah. Man. Oh man, yeah. that's so cool. You could yeah. Do it, just uh, listen to your favorite rap songs. What are doing it? Yeah. Say what they say. And then just plug your in your own stuff. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 He really, he yeah. really just talk, say it. 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 Say like this, all these guys have been doing like 10 years plus, And then like, I step in with them and they're teaching me and I'm like, then like, I, I kind of emulate some, from styles. I grew up listening to Lupe Fiasco, listening to these right. cadences and cadence counts and syllables and stuff. And they're like, they're like, yo, like where'd this come from out of nowhere? Cause I'm like, I don't know. I've just been singing these songs. Like since I was like eight years old, nine years old. And then it's like, I put my kind of like intrinsically picked it up. Yeah. yeah. The muscle was just always yep. there. It's I just, memory, and they just taught me to how to formulate and template it. And there we go. And this is, this is, it's, it's, it's magic, man. To me, music is so much magic. And then seeing how far it's taken me, just like implementing it with wrestling is mind blowing. And that's, what's cool. Like, look, anytime I get to do what I do and take it into like the worlds that I'm involved in, like Dude. anime video games, and then you get to do what you do and involved with music and all that. Exactly. It's, like that's how, that's how we grow what we do. Yeah, yeah. And, if, and and for me, like you know, if if what we do can help grow their scene as well, even if it's just by like a couple thousand people that they wouldn't have had um, yeah. consuming their stuff otherwise. But that's that's the thing about like our the beauty of what we do. That couple thousand is spreads to like yep, it does hundreds, tens of thousands because it becomes because word of mouth, of word of mouth. Yeah, yeah, and then like digital media and all that stuff. It, it's crazy. There's a picture of you with Snoop. That, that's yeah. out that's out there right yeah like, yeah and, and you're holding the aw belt so it's like all right you're exposing the aw belt you're exposing who's was this guy holding the belt oh that's kenny omega he's you know like especially all the people that follow snoop and everything yeah like exactly yeah whether it be snoop or, or giannis you know what i mean like yeah i've got a picture out there that flows around with when i when i met keanu reeves this is like people like they see these things and they go like i didn't even consider that a possibility but boy this is cool and because it's wrestling, and wrestling can be anything, it's like you can see these crossovers, which is really neat. It's, that's the beauty of it, yeah. man. It's like combining those worlds, and you just like like those guys are conduits to entertainment and like fan bases. Mm -hmm. Like Snoop mm -hmm. Dogg is four generations of like being the guy. Mike, my, my my grandma, my great grandma knows knew who Snoop was. Is his new movie? I can't say Snoop? it's his new movie, Snoop? but like yeah, 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 yeah. It was on Netflix. It was like uh, was it? It's called Dave. 
Daybreak? Or what yes, Daybreak. Yeah, was with it was Fox. so fun, man. Yeah. So fun. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. It was so very, very, yes. yeah. very fun movie. It was so yeah. fun. The action, I, I endure, action I enjoyed choreography that. was real good. But like, but like four generations, my great grandma knows who Snoop is. He's R. Willie Nelson. Yeah. Yep. And, my, really and my kids know who Snoop is. He really is. So it's like, that's like four generations of, like, that's a that's crazy to me. Kenny, so, man, I have to say this, brother. Yeah. You can do that verse, brother. I'll try. Oh, you, it you is just one. So I think I can. All right, I have the confidence. Yeah, I got a beat for you. It, <laughs> they got like four hundred beats. Like, yeah, like more a thousand beats actually. Well, the, the beat's already there because it's like I, I'm I'm adding to a pre existing uh, song right you now. Practice beat. Yeah, so <laughs> Same I've got BPMs. it. I've got it. But like, it's like a Batman saying, "Kenny." Yeah. <laughs> 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 Reach for the stars. Yeah, exactly. well, whenever you do yeah. the video for it, you do it with the same entrance that you did, like for the Tokyo Dome, where you turned around and you were like, "I'm back." Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I clipped that, and me and my friends send that uh, to each other the whole time. It's absolutely hilarious. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. Dude. That was a uh, moment. It's time to get them out of here, bro. Alrighty, that is the Star yep. City Podcast. You know, we got a lot of fun. You got to hit the the catchphrase at the end, man. Yeah. So you know what you guys got to do? You got to uh, subscribe. Make sure you keep watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Sorry if I was a little long winded. That's how it goes. I mumble. I, I get. It is great. That's how it is. It is great. But comfortable, brother. Must bid you all adieu. Goodbye, smooch. Good night. A bang. Thank you, everyone. We out. Peace. Thank you.